Welcome all of you. Uh, this is our webinar, Finance Your Art in the Frame of Together project. And Together is a partnership of four partners in the frame of Creative Europe, which is the program of the European Union to finance art and artistic collaborations. And we are here, all the partners, uh, Inspiral Circus Center from Hungary, Budapest, um, the Hungarian Juggling Association. Uh, we have Monaki Klo um, from Greece. We have Kiev Circus Academy from Ukraine and uh, Culture on Movement from France, uh, represented by Alban Varet, who was our artistic director. I wish you a great and fruitful uh, webinar. Our aim with this meeting today is that you can learn from our experience. You can learn about Creative Europe project. Uh, you can see uh, the possibilities and opportunities, how you can have money for your own project. And you also can have breakout rooms just to have personal conversation with us. And this is all, all of it is because we would like that you apply for a Creative Europe project with the next deadline, maybe already in January. And then you can also realize your dream as we did it with the Together project. So in the program, our first presenter today is Gabor Mondik uh, from Creative Europe Desk in Hungary. Uh, thank you, Gabor, so much uh, that you accepted our invitation. I thank think you for the invitation. Very, yeah, I think it's very, very valuable and you can give a huge support to all of us who is here today because I remember when I was writing this project, I was calling you every week and asking my question and you were like so open to answer them and it was really, really a huge support so that we could prepare a project which was a winner in this year. So please, Gabor, the floor is yours. Thank you. First of all, I'm I'm really happy that I could help you and that you can that you could become a beneficiary. And uh, I would like to first then inform everybody that there is a Creative Europe desk in all of your countries if you are a member of the Creative Europe program. So do not hesitate to contact my colleagues in your country who who are very uh, happy to give you information uh, on the program. But now. I will tell you, uh, I won't say all about it, just, you know, uh, around in 20 minutes, I try to, you know, be very concise about the different calls or the opportunities that you can reach uh, throughout this, this program. Uh, and now I will share my screen and begin the presentation. So I hope to see it. So Creative Europe. Creative Europe is the framework program of the European Union. And as you may know, there are these uh, seven year old periods uh, with, with seven year old budgets. And this is now the 2021, 20, 2027, seven year old period. Uh, and we really hope that it will continue beyond this period as well. So first, the key players. I was telling you about the Creative Europe desks. So we are here to uh, to assist you in the application process. However, we uh, we are not allowed to write your applications. You have to do that on on your own. Uh, but we are here to 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 help you, uh, like uh, interpret the call document, uh, writing the budget, writing the application form. And you know, Creative Europe is a, is a direct fund, as we call it. So you are in contact with you. You make a contract directly with one of the executive agencies of the European Commission, which is called EASA. So uh, if you are a beneficiary, then everything is done with uh, with this executive agency. Okay, about the budget. So it's uh, it's almost two and a half billion euros for the seven year period, uh, which at first uh, can seem as, a, as a, a huge amount, 
but if I if I tell you that it's a zero point fifteen percent of the whole seven year old period budget of the European Union, and uh, around four percent of the European workforce uh, works in the culture and creative industries, then uh, you see that it's it's not uh, so much at all. Um, but still, it's very important uh, for the sector. Uh, Creative Europe is one, one of the smallest programs of the of the European Union. So it has three strands. I'm going to tell you about the, the culture strand, but there is media, which is uh, uh, which is uh, the support mechanism for the film and the audiovisual sector. Uh, and of course, there is a cross-sectoral strand. And uh, now uh, we are supported, for example, the Creative Europe desks are supported from this cross-sectoral strand. And, uh, and also um, there are calls for, for journalistic uh, partnerships as well now in the program. So as for the culture strand, let's begin with some inspirations. So at the bottom right corner, uh, there is the Creative Europe Project Results Platform. Um, oh, I think I didn't mention that uh, the presentation will be shared with all of you, so you can click on all the links if you want. Maybe, uh, ben, ben De Guz, can you share it now in the chat? So as uh, if you would like to, like at the moment, you can you can click on all the all the links that's in the presentation. I so put in, in the... the link. Yeah, I put in the link right now in the. Uh, Thank you very much. So in the bottom right corner, there is a, there is this uh, project results platform, which is which is a database of all the beneficiaries, all the projects that got funding uh, previously in Creative Europe. So uh, I think it's it's a very good place to search for uh, for for projects uh, because I can tell you all about you know the different criteria of the calls, but if you if you look at beneficiaries then you can have the gist of what uh, this this support is all about what what the projects can be uh, about and uh, with with uh, with the top right corner we have two publications with uh, with hungarian interviews with hungarian beneficiaries uh, from the previous 2014-2020 uh, uh, period uh, and it's a bilingual uh, uh, publications so so you can re read about uh, projects with Hungarian participation. Okay, so about the different calls. First, the networks, which I'm not going to talk a lot about. There is a lot of information on the slides, but I won't uh, read out uh, everything. You can you can read it uh, later. Uh, just want to mention it because networks are really important places of uh, making partnerships. So if you don't apply as a network because only huge uh, networks can apply. For example, here you can see the logo of uh, uh, Circo Strada, which is a which is a huge network uh, in in your area in the circus, um, which is which is a beneficiary of the, of the of the network call at the moment. Uh, but networks are important for you, or could be important for you, uh, because of partnerships, because most of the project is uh, is, is based on partnerships and. First, when you when you enter, you know, international projects, uh, first maybe you don't have international partners, and you can go then to 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 these networks, which 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 can help you to to get international partners. The next one is platforms, which is also something very uh, a very structured uh, uh, call. Uh, and it's all about uh, uh, supporting emerging artists. And also, uh, there is a platform now that it's supported. Uh, it's uh, Circus Next. It's called Circus Next in 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 the field of of your uh, your sector, uh, circus. But it should be a huge consortia. So it's it should be at least twelve organizations working together. Um, so it's uh, I, I would say it's not the entry level uh, call. But if you if you uh, if you have previous experience, I think uh, maybe uh, is something to consider. 
from the, let's put it this way, classic uh, uh, calls. This is the most, uh, most uh, uh, popular, let's say, and with, with, uh, with, uh, with, the, with the biggest budget. It's called European Cooperation Project. Uh, this year, uh, you can apply only for small and medium scale projects, but there is the large, larger scale cooperation projects, which will be opened next year and and uh, and then biannually. So uh, uh, this is a this is a a, a new thing. Um, I think I, I will I will talk about this a little bit more in detail in the coming slides. So. If you if you look at this slide, you you can see some uh, buzzwords, um, and they are very very broad. If you are look at the objectives or the priorities, it's 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 not very uh, uh, very concrete. So like innovation or social inclusion, digital, uh, international dimension, but it's up to you as applicants to to fill it all these all these words so to fill it with very concrete things that you would like to do in a project. Um, and of course, there are these uh, cross-cutting issues. So these are very important because no matter what your project is about, you have to deal with these cross-cutting issues. Namely, inclusion and diversity, gender equality, and greening or sustainability. Okay, I this is the the categories. So you have to apply at least with three partners uh, for the smaller scale, and uh, at least with five partners for the medium scale. And here you can see all the all the different uh, grant uh, amounts and and co financing percentages. Okay, uh, the award criteria. Let's get a little bit more in detail of that. Um, I, I wouldn't read out loud the whole whole slide, but I would like uh, like to emphasize some some keywords, which which I think it's 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 very uh, important to 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 understand. So, in the first award criteria, relevance, uh, European added value. So, your project has to have a European added value. So, it it must mustn't just be about yourself and like uh, like to promote yourself as an artist but it has to be a cooperation a real cooperation which has a european added value uh, it's also very important to to target a problem and to have a, a very very good needs analysis what what are you aiming for what are the needs that you want to target uh, in the quality of content and activities uh, the methodologies it's very important what it means uh, it's not enough just to write down what you would like to do, but it's very important to write down why you would like to do it, how you would like to do it, and why do you think that with these methods you can achieve best your goals. Uh, target groups, of course, very important. Uh, who who is your project? Who who you who you want to reach with your project? Uh, of course, in project management, cost, cost effectiveness. And of course, the, the sustainability of your project. Uh, in this case, it's not the greening uh, sustainability, but, but your, your medium and long-term uh, effects and impacts of your project, which is very important because uh, now it's, uh, it's, it's very project management as, and impact-oriented uh, uh, goal, all of the goals in, in, in Creative Europe. So about eligibility. So to be able to apply for the cooperation projects call as a coordinator, this is very important. If you are a coordinator, you uh, must have at least two years legal uh, existence. So natural persons cannot apply for this scheme. Um, and also here you can find on this link all the participating countries, which is around 40 at, at, at this time. But hopefully, it will. The number of participating countries will grow. So about uh, about the 
budget. This is uh, this is very important. Oh, sorry. So it's very important that this, this scheme uh, and also platforms uh, and, and networks as well has this uh, special customized lump sum uh, based budget, which is a which is special because at the time of application you have to base your uh, your costs on actual costs. So you do your budget as you would normally do. But if you get selected, then they will fix uh, your your uh, uh, your costs. They will make lump sums according to work packages, which are uh, which are the the subunits of your project, according to work packages and partners. And these amounts will be fixed. And after uh, your your actual costs won't be checked. So if you deliver deliver. Uh, the goals of your project or the outputs, your outcomes. If you deliver them, then you will get the funding. If you don't deliver them, then uh, you will. Uh, they will uh, decrease your funding. But there is no financial uh, audit anymore. Even your reporting is like uh, a professional report, not a financial report. Yes, so here's a little bit about work packages, work packages with deliverables. These are very important now. So uh, I, 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 I emphasize this uh, very much because uh, that's the only thing that you should concentrate. Your, your impact, your outputs, your outcomes, the results of your project professionally. And it basically it doesn't matter how much euro and euro cents do you spend on your different uh, uh, work packages anymore. Okay, again, I mentioned partner uh, partner search uh, when I was talking about networks, but we can help you also as Creative Europe Desk. Uh, if you are looking for partners, we can help you. And also on the pages of the calls, uh, you can find a section uh, with with the partner search where you can upload your your data. Okay, so about uh, about the the extra calls that were introduced uh, from 2021. So there is Music Moves Europe for the for the music sector, and uh, there is Perform Europe for all the other performing arts sectors, including circus. Uh, and there is uh, this special call called Culture Moves Europe, which is the only call where uh, natural persons uh, can apply. So um, and also there is this special call for for the support of uh, Ukrainian uh, culture and creative sectors. Uh, there are open calls uh, with this uh, with with all these uh, with all these with all these calls. Uh, the European Commission decided uh, not to have contracts uh, on its own, but they you know like they there was there was a call for for a consortia to be able to spread or or to be able to uh, to to make call for proposals and and distribute the the european commission funds and that's what these calls are all, all, all about so about first the culture moves europe call it's an individual mobility scheme it supports the residency program of artists and cultural professionals so again if you are an artist, you can apply. It's very easy to apply. It's the it's the easiest uh, call that you should you should try and apply. Uh, it's a rolling call and it's open until uh, the thirty first of May next year. But in every month there is a there is a deadline and and after every month there is a selection uh, process going on. And also. Uh, the other call in Culture Moves Europe is for uh, organizations who want to welcome uh, 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 artists or cultural professionals for residency. And for this, the deadline is the 16th of, of January. And for this, the budget is uh, calculated on a, on a lump sum basis, let's say, or as I would put it, it's, it's something like a scholarship. So your so your um, uh, so your 
scholarship is calculated with these uh, with these numbers. So it depends how many days you spend uh, in 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 another Creative Europe country, uh, by which travel means do you travel? So you if you choose uh, a greener uh, travel option, you will get a top up, or uh, if you need a visa, you will get a top up, or if you would like to have your family with you, you will get a top up, and so on. And here we can see uh, all these different uh, top ups and how your uh, rent amount will be calculated. Okay, so after Culture Moves Europe, which, which as I said, it was an entry level, let's say Perform Europe is now a medium level, and and let's say the cooperation projects are in in this uh, in this. Um, in this context, the the high level uh, that that you should that you should aim for. So with Perform Europe, now uh, the call was opened on the first of December. So it's a uh, it's quite a new uh, call. Uh, you can apply in three categories. So it's it's very similar to to a, a cooperation project call, but much more easier. Uh, you need a consortia here as well, with at least uh, three different partners. And also you have uh, similar priorities. You, you can see inclusion, diversity, uh, fighting against climate change. So, um, and with this, in this scheme, uh, uh, 35 uh, partnerships will be selected in, in during three different calls. Now there is the first call, next uh, summer there is the second call, and uh, next uh, autumn there will be the third call. And you can see all the details at this this link on the Perform Europe website. Okay, and um, when uh, when talking about European funding, synergies is like a, a very uh, important word that you should consider as well. For example, with the uh, Together project, it's also a very good synergy with the European Capital of Culture this year with Vesprim. And also there are other uh, European uh, European awards or special actions that you should you should consider to have uh, have some some synergies as well. And uh, I hope I I was clear. But of course, if you if you have any questions, just join me in in the breakout room, and we can talk about everything. But here you can find our uh, contacts if you'd like to contact us later and uh, with this i would uh, like to thank you all for listening to me and thank you for the invitation again thank you gabor thank you so much i do hope that all of you who is here today could understand the language of the european uh calls which is already a challenge itself so that's why we are here together um yeah so i think what i'm actually it's my time to continue with my presentation and this is exactly the topic what i would like to talk about and i ask uh, bendegus to help me with uh, the presentation itself. So if you guys I'm ready, are you, if you guys are ready, I'm just taking the floor and jump into the presentation about engineering the project. And um, I choose this word because I feel that it's a very inspiring word, whatever it, it, it means. Uh, I choose this word uh, after Daniela Jovic, who is our project officer in Creative Europe um, organization in the, um, at the European Union uh, Program Administration. And she was using this word, and I actually felt that this is exactly describing what we are doing when we are designing a project. So designing project, engineering project is... Uh, very uh, uh, crucial when you when you create uh, when you wanna uh, present an application. I'm not sure my presentation is visible. Is it? It is. So maybe yes. it's only me who cannot see it because I actually cannot. Um, but that's okay because I supposed to know what's there. Um, 
So, uh, engineering a project, and then please just go on the next slide. slide. Um, because uh, for me, engineering, it, it means to create a harmony, which means to create a strategy between me and the call itself. And this is about to create a win-win situation because it would be very, very naive to think that my goal is exactly the same goal as the European Union or whoever is financing um, the call. It is exactly the same. So actually the challenge it is uh, that what I would like to do, what I would like to create, what is my goal, how can it go together and how can it go to the exact same direction as the call it uh, wants itself? Uh, please, the next slide. Bendegus. Yes, thank you. And as dialogue was a very important word in the Together project, I think this is also very much about a dialogue, which uh, I'm doing with a call. So uh, when we talk about, for example, the Creative Europe project, it has a call. I have, mm, I don't exactly know how long it is. I guess it's a between like 50 to 100 pages. So I suggest you to read it all. And maybe um, you think that it's just like loads of paper, loads of document, but honestly, I read every, every word of it. And you also need to be able to listen to what is written there. And also you need to be generous because as we said, is always creating a win-win situation. So it is already a collaboration, which is starting between, uh, let's say the Creative Europe project in this case, and my organization. So I need to read it. I need to understand it. I need to listen to the words and every word has its meaning. So for example, um, it's very important to understand the terminology of the text. And I would say that have reading a call, it's already like speaking another language. We need to uh, learn and practice and start to speak the language like the project languages, because it is always using loads of words like uh, as learning a foreign language, we learn. We, need, we really need to learn these words as well. So when Gabor was saying European added value is like three words, which I don't know if it makes sense for the first um, uh, for, to anybody, but there is like a whole word behind it. So it's very important to understand what this expression, what is the terminology and what does it mean exactly. We also use like all these words, dissemination. So dissemination, again, there is a whole word behind it and we need to really investigate and understand what the project call uh, would like to see under um, the part of dissemination. Also about sustainability, as Gabor was also mentioning, and especially every call has its own terminology, for example, the work packages or the lump sum. So these are like words we actually don't use at all in the everyday life, especially in circus. It's not a word which is uh, specifically interesting for us. But when we read the call, it's important that we kind of learn the project language and we start to speak it and we start to understand how to use it, what does it mean, and how can I reflect on it. Also, um, please, um, let's go to the next uh, slide. So when I say engineering a project, I mean to design a project, which is about like reading, reflecting, and adapting. So when I'm reading the call, which is about a hundred page, and I want to read every word of it because every word has its meaning. Every word has a purpose. So I need to understand what is the purpose of it. I need to reflect on it and I need to adapt my ideas so that they are really uh, in harmony with what the call is aiming. 
And then I can make myself to the question, uh, how much does uh, my idea match uh, that goal and uh, the objectives of the course? So it's like, is it a hundred percent match? Probably not. And then the question like, until what percentage I can go down uh, and still apply for this goal? Because I know that some people, you know, they see the call, they see the priorities of the call, and then they see like, okay, this is talking about like, let's say, uh, greening, and they would like a legal entity, and they would like uh, that three partners is doing so, more or less, I can involve one partner, uh, I have some idea about greening, and uh, maybe I have nothing else which is matching the call, so like, that's a very low level of matching, and uh, I think as much the percentage is high, as as uh, more I have a possibility that I will win um, this uh, project. So I do suggest that you apply for a call which you can match uh, the priorities and you can match uh, the objective of the, of the call, something like near 200%. But as higher the percentage, as uh, better you have the chances. I, me personally, I never apply for something which is not matching all of the priorities because then I feel that it's not written for me, it's for somebody else. And of course, other people is also applying for the course. So why would I uh, take a competition where I actually have a very low percentage to win? It's not for me. So I just um, propose to apply for that kind of call, which is uh, for you, or if it is not for you, you can still reflect and adapt uh, your uh, dreams. Because um, for the first reading, for sure, it's never gonna be 100% match. So that's about designing and engineering. And also, I really suggest to give a time to build a strategy because um, you have many, uh, many, many factors listed in the call and you have a dream in your head, or at least me, usually I have a dream in my head when I start to write an application and all of this has to arrive to that win-win uh, position when the call is reflected, uh, let's say 100%, uh, and also my dream can come true as much as is possible. Uh, please, the next slide, which is exactly about cooking your soup. So uh, since I like to cook, I just um, really feel that this is very much like cook a soup because we have loads of ingredients and of, of the same ingredients you can prefer prepare very different kind of foods you can prepare depending on on uh, uh, how you mix them what kind of spice you put on and uh, also of the amount of the different ingredients if you put some ingredients more then it will be a different food at the end of the day than if you put uh, a different kind of proportion. So when I uh, tell to you to cook your soup, it's about exactly about the designing and the engineering. So you look at your ingredients and then you try to mix it as much uh, possibly matching uh, the coal and also your dream. And just like three things, which is very much important, the partnership, because um, uh, definitely you will be together for a long time, at least one year, maybe longer, sometimes smaller project less, but you need to have a trust, a confidence, and you have to remember that we have so much, uh, so many cultural differences, and it's like, you know, a relationship. So without your partners, you cannot do the project, and with your partner, you need to work on your relationship and you have to develop a confidence and you have, have to develop a dynamic of work and the common understanding. The same for the activities. Um, and 
why I was writing for me the most important is that uh, the activity you uh, plan in that project, I think is the most important that it contributes to the, to your daily work, which means that a project for me is never a separated project. The project is something which I actually wanted to do already, or at least is contributing at a high level to uh, that exact exercises and daily work I'm doing and I'm trying to uh, integrate to the daily work of the organization. Also because it's very important that on long term I can keep the project results only if they are fitting my activity, my plans and my daily functioning. And also because many projects, even if it's 100%, we always dream bigger and we always like to put more and more ingredients, let's say lots of spices and this all costs money. So uh, if it is really in harmony with my uh, activity, then I'm happy to invest more in this project and grow it even bigger than it was planned. Um, the next slide, please. And the budget. So the budget, I think, is like something uh, people uh, very much get afraid of it usually. And it's maybe just because uh, they uh, imagine something very more, much more difficult than it is. For me, a budget is just numbers put in a good order. And I know that I'm economist and I love numbers and I love to play with numbers. Uh, but still, please consider that numbers are your friends and budget is a, an amazing thing because you can describe the whole project you have just in one page. So like how many uh, times you go somewhere and how much does it cost and how many people is participating and you multiply it, that's actually the budget itself. So, and it also described the, the project itself. So you can consider it as an easy language to describe it. You can consider it as a language uh, which talks on uh, the language of the numbers. And also I suggest to make it in parallel with the strategy building. So for me, first is always the imagination and the dream of the activities. And then I try to translate them into numbers. And after I translated them into numbers, I will see something realistic and maybe I have to change my plan. And then I can go into details because Usually when we write down all the prices and we were uh, investigating how much something is cost and put it on a paper, then usually we realize, hopefully not always, that, okay, it's much more money than the budget allows it. So then I have to start to play with it. And then it helps a lot to have an Excel format. And then you can change like, okay, maybe my activity uh, cannot host like 10 artists as I want it, but maybe I can have six artists. So if you use an Excel format and then you can just put in like how many people going uh, somewhere, use the lump sums. Lump sum is always that you use an average. So you just use an average and you can play and change the factors until you arrive somewhere, which is uh, fitting into the frame uh, uh, set by the call. And of course, we have to sacrifice and compromise many, many times or re design the budget itself. So if maybe I can just suggest that you consider budgeting as something like playing with numbers and then you can start to uh, enjoy it. I think it's something very enjoyable. And uh, maybe some um, two things for the end. Yes, it was great. Thank you, Bendagus. The next slide. So uh, think about your best friends, which means to me that whenever I design a project, I think about on my uh, best friends. So I try to think on the budget 
okay, if my best friend would come, what do I need? I need to welcome that person. I need to organize this and that. So whenever I imagine a project is not something far from me, it's always I try to put exactly the person I would like to host, exactly that activity, and that helps me to really um, imagine every circumstances of that activity and then uh, put real prices on it. And the last thing is think about every project together because it's a partnership, it's a collaboration, it's a collaboration between your partners and you, it's a collaboration between the EU fund and for in this case the uh, Creative Europe desk. So we have like loads of collaboration inside this and uh, you can collect the information, you can go to um, informative events, you can, there is always a person to call, so just don't stay alone, think about together. So thank you so much, this was my uh, short advices on engineering a project, and uh, you can meet me in a breakout room where we're going to talk about networking mainly and uh, maybe about future plans. Thank you. Sorry to interrupt, but I just would like to compliment you, Veronica, because uh, because believe it or not, we were talking we were talking about the same things. But of course, uh, Veronica's presentation was much more, you know, uh, comprehensible how to say it so you know i was talking about you know numbers with this eu jargon and she was translating it to you basically uh to a much more uh, easier language so thank you very much for that wow that's a compliment i take it <laughs> cool you made my day thank you gabor <laughs> and um I give the word on to our next presenter, the lovely Marianthi. Please, Marianthi, take the floor. Hello, everyone. I hope you are still with us. I hope you find this interesting. Um, as uh, Gabor said, some and Veronica, some of these might sound like gibberish, you know, like what is this? language with lump sums and everything and then it comes Veronica that says that numbers can be our friends and all about this like nice cooking uh, well uh, within the cooking uh, some things uh, need our uh, special attention I'm here to um, let's say to spoil it for you guys but always always in a good sense um, just a bit of a like couple of pictures uh, for what's coming. So Bende, if you can show us just the first one picture so that everyone is like with us again, if you feel kind of tired or something, maybe this picture uh, will bring you back. So if we can see this first picture is uh, one of my associates. And um, yeah, so like things that can go wrong uh, during uh, uh, the implementation of a European, of a Creative Europe uh, project. We need to be prepared, okay? So um, this is my uh, friend and the associate, Anna. That was one of her faces during uh, the um, uh, the project. And then uh, there was another face, if we can see the other face too. Um, and that's the other face <laughs> so uh, anyway it's like uh, I'm gonna talk to you guys about difficulties but then these difficulties are not for uh, taking our motivation it's just to help us be prepared that like everything in life even implementing a project like a Creative Europe project, which means living your dream, like we were saying, cannot be all like flowers and happiness, okay? So thank you for, for sharing, Ben de Goose. I hope uh, people are, are, um, are back with me. So I will also take you 
uh, like a step by step. So let's go to writing the application. Okay, like Veronica said and Gabor, you can look for your um, sources, study, and start you know writing. Um, I would say consider the competition. Okay, uh, a lot of uh, projects are being written and applied that are considered high quality, which means that competition in with, with, with create, creative projects is already high, okay? So a lot of them have been labeled as high quality. And um, uh, what, what I think is that, of course, you will need like your nice team, your being together and the nice work that you've been doing with designing and everything. Just put an extra effort to, to to spice up your application. Like Veronica says, uh, to find the 100 match. Yeah, as, as if it was like this Tinder kind of, of matching or any kind of matching for, for um, different tastes. Um, and then this, of course, needs time, okay? And time also means uh, money. I mean, like monthly hours of working, Okay, so please be prepared. Once again, this is not for ruining the procedure, just to be prepared that time and money will be an issue even when you're writing an application. And not all your applications, not all our applications will be approved, okay? So be ready that some of the applications may end up in the drawer so that maybe you can use them at a different time okay on a different call so like veronica said maybe it wouldn't be the match but this time and effort please consider it as a really valuable experience and as a way also to boost your creativity when you're writing a project all this time that you're putting it's your creative mind that it's behind and is trying to find the right words and to make the budget our friends and 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 all all of these things but really some of the applications may not be approved of course this is not our goal but just be prepared for that well i have my share of this veronica has had her share of this and a lot of people that have already made applications within this group i'm sure we've all had our share for this that well, some of our applications were just not approved. Um, but but once we are in, okay, and let's say we are in in uh, in whatever different calls we want to be, okay. So as far as I see, this group of the people I know or of uh, like what you wrote about yourselves, we have uh, individual artists, we have people coming from organizations or from or from networks. So if you decide to apply with Culture Moves Europe as an individual or with Perform Europe or with the European um, Cooperation Project, you can be in with all this effort and preparation. What happens next? Please be ready that there is not a very wide window of adaptation, okay? So let's say you have an idea, you write about it, and it gets approved, yeah? Your proposal is approved. And then along the way, as you're implementing your project, you realize, oh shit, like maybe there would be another way for me to do this. Uh, well, not. <laughs> uh, once you have signed your uh, contract, yeah, not a lot of adaptations can be made. And this can be a bummer, you know, because time passes and we evolve, and especially as artists, yeah, we always rethink things. But keep in mind that your contract requires you to implement what you have um, what you have said that you will do. And if this proposal was um, accepted, then there must have been a very good reason for it. So try to think about that and keep on doing what you said you will do. Um, so what else? Yeah, trust your proposal, that is. And 
let's say now that you are in and you say I will do what I said I will do and then this whole thing starts. One of the main difficulties and also one of the most exciting things is like Veronica said, being together. It's collaboration. Already we have this, uh, we had this webinar and some of the people weren't sure whether it's 12 o'clock or one o'clock because it was Central European time, but then Central European time is different in Greece. What I'm trying to say is that you, you will have partners from around Europe and that's, <clears throat> that's the whole point for it. So you will have different cultural backgrounds. You won't speak the same language. You will have English as your bridge. You, you will have different culture. So an extra effort to be on the same line, like to be on the same page will be needed. And we need to be ready for this effort because of course the benefits are all of this like dreams that are, will be coming true. <clears throat> um handling the funding so yes number can be our friends although for for many of us artists me included still numbers can be like scary um so we are a grassroots level organization okay monotypo is a grassroots level organization we don't handle many of these projects actually this one was our first creative euro project and to operate the funds can be challenging and um, can be quite stressful, okay? Uh, I believe that a strong team is needed and definitely people that have knowledge of financial management issues. Even if you are, even if you apply as a, as a solo artist, yeah, and you don't feel comfortable with, with numbers, ask for help because it will be needed for you to be able to handle this, um, these funds uh, because there are some restrictions in the, in the distribution, no matter how easy it seems. Restrictions are there and we have to follow them in order to make uh, this good collaboration with, uh, with uh, our funders. Uh, coordination then, how to coordinate um, a project or a mobility or um, uh, putting up uh, your show, uh, all of these things that we can um, apply uh, with Creative Europe. Uh, ben de Gush, can we see like only like moments of the next picture just to get you guys prepared of, of the hours you will need to spend? So a little bit of a spoiler alert until the picture is, uh, is up. Yeah, so be prepared to be in front of your computer guys uh i know we are circus people myself included artists we don't already like now sitting in our chairs is already like you know we want to move a bit and we want to do things but spending time in front of the computer it's it's the thing that will get that will get everything going yeah from the application to the implementation and uh, this is me and Anna actually so coordinating um, coordinating the actual uh, work package let's use a little bit of terminology also so the actual work package of the LFCNA actions okay uh, thank you Ben de Goose. just just to have like some different image and not just me talking um, we had to manage the European Capital of Culture, which was Elefsina, our different partners from the different countries. We have to we had to uh, manage uh, the requests of the artists, and then we had to cooperate and and coordinate from the light technicians to the B and B owners that were hosting our people, and from the social media managers to the requests of the audience and all of this will fall in your hands when you're coordinating even even if you do your solo act as an artist and you have your funding still you will be in a place where you will have to coordinate with so many different people <clears throat> this can be energy draining as simple as that 
even if you are like an extrovert, it, it can be really like energy draining and frustrating and confusing. You need to, to, to realize, uh, you need to realize how to handle all these people. Be ready for these kind of frustrations and take time for yourself and remember all the whys, like why you're doing all of these things. And then it will it will come back, you know, it will come back. Um, mm, yeah, um, so I wrote I wrote some things down that that helped me actually adaptability. Yeah, to be adaptive in all of these situations. Agility is another word. Uh, thinking on your feet when, when you have to make decisions and, and you're coordinating a project and you're there and you make things happen. Yeah, thinking on your feet, decision making. And for sure, like Veronica said, have your, your friends close. A good production team is, um, is always needed. Um, last but not least, because projects happen and we are there and we experience them and then we all have this magical feeling and then it's not over then it's evaluation and reporting please keep that in mind make sure you will have enough energy and time to reflect on what happened life moves on project is done we have amazing feelings so we have like all these all these feelings and everything that happened the project is not done okay so uh evaluation please make up time and energy because you will need it and um sustainability sustainability is kind of like a difficulty for this kind of projects but keep that in mind from the beginning what happens after this funding ends for this project this project goes away no it can be a really good like way to prepare yourself from the start to be there and try to make this project sustainable. This webinar is actually our effort to make our project sustainable, to get you guys together, to get us together, continue networking, continue sharing ideas and see how we can move along uh, by being together. Thank you very much. I hope I didn't scare you too much. That was not my intention, but we really needed a reality check for implementing this kind of projects. Thank you so much, Mariansi. I think your presentation was just putting in the light from another perspective again, the same topic, which is great. That's why we are here. And now I give the floor uh, to Nina, our Ukrainian partner, uh, to talk about from another angle again of the project. Thank you, Nina. Please, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, hello from uh, Kiev Circus Academy. Uh, it was a great pleasure to participate in such a big international project, and we are very grateful for this invitation. I would share our uh, thoughts and our um, um, uh, our feelings from this project and what challenges we faced as well. And the start is like I would start the boundaries and exploring new territories. This is what it's all about. Uh, and uh, mostly I would focus on uh, the feelings of our students, the main participants who were participated in this project. Because at the Academy, we were very much focused not only to be involved in the Academy, but also what experience it would give to them to be a part of this big project. So for the students of uh, the academy, uh, uh, it was a huge experience because we know for our rich traditions and uh, classical training methods and uh, the opportunity to participate in an international uh, contemporary circus project was both thrilling and also eyes opening. 
it marked a significant departure from their familiar routine and uh, a chance to embarrass the whole new world of creativity and innovation. I would also wanted to share the screen with you and uh, to share the presentation, a small presentation that I prepared. Because when we are talking about the Kyiv Circus Academy and the traditions, this is what I meant. This is what I mean about. Uh, it's a very typical, uh, tip, very typical uh, big of what do we usually do. And uh, stepping out of traditions, it meant to us to see absolutely different uh, location, which is this. So this was one of the challenges for us. Uh, like when we started to collaborate together, we found out that the performances cannot be not only inside in the circus or on the stage, but it could be everywhere. And this is about the dialogue, how we communicate with a big audience and with the smallest one when we are stepping on their territory and how do we feel about it? How do people feel about that? So stepping in a long standing heritage of circus arts, our academy has been a renowned for uh, And uh, uh, we uh, renowned uh, and we were presenting like uh, uh, in different uh, techniques but um, uh, but uh, however, circus invitation and participating in together, participating together uh, in their international contemporary circus uh, project presented a unique challenge and an opportunity to break free from our accustomed routine. This is uh, what we are talking that the playground for kids became our stage and how we were. Uh, working with that. Also, another challenges that we had, we had this we were not prepared for, like uh, that a human factor, what, how do we feel, how do we communicate, what emotions do we have. I remember very good after the piece of being in Greece and experience absolutely different um, uh, uh, working methods, uh, different production methods. Uh, the students were feel that so confused. They were feel so lost. And when we were messaging to each other in the chat, their emotions were mostly look like that. But uh, of course, that was definitely a new experience for all of them, all of us. And uh, the students eagerly asked uh, to change uh, to step outside their comfort zone and explore the, uh, the realm of contemporary circus, which an open mind and hunger for new knowledge. They also um, find their journey and they were learning and adapting uh, to different unconventional techniques and artistic expressions that define contemporary circus. And this is the image of uh, our last show in uh, uh, Greece, when there were a lot of people who came and that we were gathering together. And I think this shows really deeply how was it and what uh, uh, feelings do we all have, a uh, feelings of uh, that we are all united, that we are doing this for people and we are doing this together. And I remember very good that after that, everybody was celebrating. They were so much expired and they were so much happy with this experience. So uh, at the very end, uh, I wanted to say that at the project unfolded, the Ukrainian students found themselves immersing in an environment that encouraged experimentation, a fusion of art forms, innovative approaches to perform. We're exploring different methods, aerial acrobatics, to blending dance and theater elements, 
they also deserved, deserved new uh, avenues and uh, also self-expression and artistic collaboration. So this was um, our Ukrainian experience for the academy, for the students. but we are so happy that it had happened exactly this way to us. So uh, again, we are very grateful for this interesting experience for the Ukrainian side. Thank you. Thank you, Nina, for sharing with us. And yeah, you just made me remember all those talks in Greece uh, every day to analyze like are the guys understanding what is happening if it's frightening them if they like it if they want to come back the next day or not at all so it was a huge uh, experience and also I think it was a great transformation for them um, for sure. <laughs> thanks a lot thank you so, at this point, I would like to thank to all of the presenters um, to share uh, uh, their presentation in this frontal part. And we are optionally, actually, this is the moment to see the LF Cine film. Uh, and I actually feel that maybe this is uh, the moment that we jump in the breakout room as well. Um, I just maybe don't have the sense of, uh, if we need more to have a small coffee, a small break, or anyway, the butterfly um, part in the breakout room is uh, possible. I think I asked Bendagus as our tech host, is it um, um, possible to play the film uh, parallelly to the breakout rooms? Yes, uh, it's, absolutely, yeah. it's absolutely possible, but we have one more really important thing. You know, the group the picture, photo. yes, photo. the photo time. So uh, we are really here. So I would like to encourage everybody to uh, put on your camera, whoever wants it, of course. And we will make a nice group picture because we are a really big, nice group. And um, yes, and I would like to have a fun moment real circus style moment when we do some nice things together and okay people are coming cool yeah i i put my finger oh someone wants to join on oh, here you go yeah so everybody's here who has the camera on and uh, for the first picture i would like to see everybody's pointing towards someone else Okay, so you can point up, down, wherever you want, yeah, okay, because we are together and we want to show is yes, really nice. Okay, three, two, one, cheese. <laughs> yes, okay, I put the picture in, it worked out, I save it. Okay, and for the next picture, I would like to have everybody, yes, uh, grabbing a prop around you like i have a used banana or whatever and yeah grabbing a prop and put it in on your face in front of you on your shoulder wherever you want yeah okay i have the banana the banana is a really funny thing okay so oh you have a hula hoop wow blesses everything okay three two one two picture <laughs> yeah okay thank you Ivan, very much Verica, do you have an idea? Um, very surprised face. Surprised face. This looks amazing. Yeah, really surprised face. You can even act like this if you want. Uh, I can act only with one hand. So three, two, one. Surprise. Okay. <laughs> I was even a little bit scared. <laughs> okay. Anyone has an idea? Everyone is reacting, eh? That's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> Very lovely face. Loving each other face. It has to happen. Yes, of course. A lovely face. Okay. 
Three, two, one, love. Okay. Even we hear some children from Ivana. Yeah, cool. This makes us love. Okay. Yeah. So, and otherwise, then we are ready to broadcast the LFC in a movie, right? Uh, what is the plan for that? So we even... Okay. So the, this moment we make you feel in the movie. We just uh, screen the first uh, small movie we made in uh, July. In the meantime, you can have your coffee break and tea break. Uh, uh, change the water in and out and then um, uh, as soon as uh, the film finish you find us in the breakout room and if you don't know how to enter a breakout room Bendagus is going to be always here to support you uh, to find it so that's our program and then it will be a cinema after the breakout rooms as well so use the opportunity we're gonna have three breakout rooms after uh, for networking and meeting and talking uh, about your organization one breakout room with gab or if you have any practical question about the administration or the conceptual questions of creative europe and the other funds and also a third room um, with collecting uh, good advices and um, any practices for uh, projects with Marianthi. And uh, now I invite you, probably you could have a small rest and uh, we opened already the breakout room. Yeah, sorry, I, it took for me a time to find this room. <laughs> it was not easy. So um, uh, I thought that uh, we can uh, start uh, this networking with some short presentation. So everybody can just say maybe like a half minute, um, one minute about who you are and, uh, and of your organization. So we understand who we are in this room. And I'm so happy to see you here, some of you. I haven't met for a while. So maybe I just start uh, in case, because actually I didn't present it myself at the webinar. So I'm the president of the Hungarian Juggling Association. And we had like many, 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 mainly Erasmus Plus projects in the last uh, 2020 years. And actually the first project we had, it was with Espai de Cirque in uh, 2000 one I think or two and then we continue to be like very strategic partner for a while so I pass the words on to whoever wants to take the words I think yeah, <laughs> yeah. because I'm part of the Spider Cirque that association that Veronica was mentioning uh, from Valencia in Spain and yes we were I'm working in the association uh, from the last three years, and I, I we lost the track a little of the European projects. So I we want to be back uh, in this wheel, and yes, I'm very grateful of meeting you. Thank you, Veronica, for inspiring a lot. And thank you, yes. Juan. Uh, Nikos, we are just because you just arrived. We are just going a circle, and everybody say some words of themselves, so we know who we are. And uh, it was me and Juan so far. So whoever wanna take the words, please. Hello. Hello. I'm Stylian Nos from Thessaloniki. I'm uh, representing uh, uh, three <laughs> things. Uh, one, Monokiklo. I'm uh, new in Monokiklo. So I'm uh, only three months in Monokiklo and I'm still learning. The other project that I'm representing is uh, a networking in Thessaloniki specifically. We call it Artnet Thessaloniki and we try to uh, develop and bring the cultural activity of Thessaloniki into, uh, into more focus and also to find ways to communicate with the state so that 
the state can support uh, Thessaloniki's artistical activities. And uh, the third one is my, a personal project of mine, which had to do again okay. with... Um, uh, I, I was managing uh, an old building that was uh, a heritage, that is a heritage in Thessaloniki, and an old historical building, where I was hosting uh, cultural and artistical activities um, I don't like labels, but more of uh, underground and alternative artistical activities. And the building was so um, magnificent in a way, so it would bring all the underground cultural activity into the light. And this is what I like to do. I like to bring out um, things that are more hidden uh, culturally. And I'm also a performer, so I'm I, I try to communicate all these things. Thank you. Please go on. Who would like to say some words? Or please do say some words. Hello. Are. My name is Nikos. And I am from uh, Patras, Greece. Wait, because the light came okay, better like this. I am from Patra, Greece. I am a member of uh, ex Saltibagos company here in Patra. I'm an artist and um, uh, we have a, a, a space here in Patra. We have a small circus school, uh, like a social center. I would like to call it more. And uh, since this September, we might have the management of a theater also. So we are uh, into a new world. Um, we are uh, looking forward to have a new collaborations. And uh, that's all from, for now. Thank you, Nikos. Um, Lutza, you just arrived. So this is the networking room and we are going around now, like just to know who is who. And uh, please take the words, somebody. Hi, I'm, I'm Sean Lang. Uh, uh, originally, I'm actually from the United States, uh, but I am based here in uh, AEO, Greece. Um, uh, with my wife, Maria, um, I'm a circus artist, uh, and so this is all very new for me here. Uh, I actually have the pleasure of knowing Nikos, uh, so network already established, <laughs> um, but, uh, I'm primarily a, a juggler, uh, amongst many other ground-based, uh, circus acts. And I, I think that's all I have to say, though. Uh, I'm also open to answering questions because I'm kind of an oddball here. <laughs> but where are you based now? In in the uh, well, actually, I'm in a village in Greece uh, called Rizomilos, but we're right right outside the city of Aeo. Yeah, it's about like uh, 45 minutes from actually where Nikos is in Patras. So, a bit away. Excellent. Yeah, everybody likes uh, sunny Greece. That's without, uh, <laughs> that's for sure. Cool. Please, uh, somebody take the words. I can introduce. Hello. Um, my name is Mina. I'm from uh, Ukraine. Uh, I'm working at the uh, Kiev Municipal Academy of Circus and Performing Arts. And uh, also, I'm a founder of the Charitable Foundation for Development, for Development of Ukrainian Art. And uh, right now, I'm located in Spain, in Torrevieja, so it's not far away from Valencia. Uh, so I would be also happy maybe to discuss some, um, um, for some collaborations as well. So this is a short information about me. Thank you. 
Thank you, Nina. I think, Luca, you are uh, the one we are all eager to know about. Hi, I'm Luca. Um, I'm from Hungary. I'm actually at Inspira right now. <laughs> and um, I'm a dancer originally, uh, but in the last four or five years, I, I don't know, sagged into circus <laughs> somehow. And I, um, what I'm interested in right now is to find projects where I can use more than one things because I'm not, I don't have like one specific thing what I do all the time, but I do a lot of things and I really like to use them. And I think that's what I'm, uh, I don't know, the best way to use many things at the same time, but it's not too easy to find projects like this. So. Hi. <laughs> cool. So maybe I just, ah, Sophia we have. Sophia, we just going around to know who is who. I'm eating something, that's why I close the camera. <laughs> please Hello. eat, please feel uh, <laughs> comfortable. Thank you. You want to say some words of uh, you while you are eating? <laughs> while I'm eating. <laughs> Just to know uh, where you're from, maybe. Okay. Um, okay, this I can do it while I'm eating. <laughs> I am from Greece. Um, I'm here, yes, because I'm, I'm um, a member of two collective, collective initiatives. And um, we try... Um, I. I try with my partners to see how we can uh, create a sustainability for our projects. So it, I'm really interested about uh, ways of founding our projects. Um, and Stelios also is one, is a team, uh, is a partner uh, from uh, one collective initiative. <laughs> hmm. Okay, so I will lead now. <laughs> Please. Cool. So um, I was just thinking I brought some topic with me we can talk about, but also I'm very curious if you have like any specific question or any specific uh, interest or um, you want to throw into this room and then we can have it together. Somebody? Hello again. <laughs> Uh, especially in Greece and more specifically in Thessaloniki, uh, since we are researching uh, this uh, city specifically, uh, we, we can say that um, the state in general does not uh, support the uh, cultural activity in Thessaloniki, so we are trying to figure out a way to make ourselves more visible uh, towards the state uh, supports and uh, try to um, communicate with uh, the state supports uh, and, the, and the municipality supports uh, more openly. And uh, there is also another aspect uh, that we are not very familiar with in Thessaloniki, which has to do with uh, residency. So we are very open to uh, European collaborations. We already have some friends in Ireland that are mentoring us. Uh, and we are trying to figure out ways to, you know, bring uh, people uh, together in order, in order to open the Thessaloniki artistical community towards Europe. So when you say residency, is about monarchic law? No, no, I'm talking about uh, in a more uh, wide uh, uh, meaning of the word, especially for the for our uh, group that we for our initiative that we created that is called Artnet Thessaloniki and has to do with uh, bringing out the more uh, out of focus. Uh, art groups in Thessaloniki. 
Yeah, actually, what you are saying, it just makes me remember about the different levels of networking, because sometimes we, it's like it's it's just that important to have a national network level. So, for example, we in Hungary are not very much connected with other circus studios and with other circus uh, places in the meaning of like small circus schools, leisure circus schools. But it was always a plan to make this kind of network because the, for sure, if there is a national network of uh, the the organizations together, uh, we can reach much more, maybe even like advocacy and lobbying and the government at the government and make us more visible. So, and I think together project, it was also great from the Greek point of view because Marianthi really tried to collect uh, artists uh, very much from the different part of Greek, so Greece, so not have only Monochiklo to have uh, delegated artists, but have like as an opportunity to create a Greek group, a Greek collaboration, and have a group together. And um, I don't know, like Nikos, you actually knew all of your uh, Greek uh, fellows in the project or it gives also to you a possibility I mean you've been to circus already for hundreds of years so maybe you knew everybody but have you found that maybe together created networking also among Greek artists yeah you're muted. Well, actually yeah. I, I knew them the most of the people uh, and um, but not so good so it was a uh, it was something for me also and now I already invited some of them to Patra to act so um, yeah it was helpful and really a nice opportunity to expand this networking for me also even if I knew um, the most of the people I it wasn't so deep and with together we went deeper in the um, in this connection so it was really helpful for for me also mm. yeah 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 so this this national networking I think is very important and I think you guys in Spain I are quite good in it, no? Like you have several networks for circuses, which we don't have in, you know, how to keep together, no? <laughs> Juan, what, what is your... Yes, I mean, um, sure that the circus education is not uh, ruled in the government. If you study circus, is that as if, if you are studying nothing. So uh, all the organizations in Spain are are working a lot to to find that right you know, to to be able to work as a a worker as an artist or as a circus teacher as something that exists um so the sure that we the suggestion should be together to to defend our rights um yes economically uh, we don't have a, i mean every association has a, its own say, accounting and its own there are no projects between us more than this FEXE, this federation of all of us together um, there is a uh, no there is a program of of a teaching circus there is a teacher of teachers so this is a project that we are ruling, ruling all the schools together um, and yes i think it's important to network and I want to ask you a little, uh, Veronica, and the people with more experience about, um, I think after uh, listening Marianthi about these uh, fears or uh, extra energies that we are needing, <laughs> sometimes we are very full already with our agenda, so to, to find a time to go through European partners that you don't know each other, <laughs> maybe <laughs> that's you, you met like in an application or in a video call like this, how to build the trust, you know, I want to ask you in general, because to to put in the agenda to do a, a European project together, it's a big effort for all of us, no? So I want to ask you a little how, how to build that that uh, networking, that seeding, that starting, <laughs> maybe it's just magically, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have some tips about yeah, networking. And, and... Yes. 
I think what you asking is like very, it's a very important thing because we are in a project for the moment as well, where our coordinator, it was not our personal contact and we are struggling a lot because we just were happy that we are involved in a project where we have a share of 26,000 euro, but then it was like a two years of, I wouldn't say a nightmare, but you know, it was really like, uh, all the time, loads of stress on it because we didn't know each other. We didn't know the expectations. It was not very clear. Um, so it was rising loads of things during the two years and it's, um, and they are still haven't sent the money to us, uh, a part of it. And, and so like all these things, uh, we can, we, we try to avoid as much as possible when we are creating a project. And so I think it's, it's very important that we are, we don't shadow the human part just because we see 26,000 euro we will receive because it still needed to clear what is behind. Uh, for me, it's uh, very important the networking events and uh, the the European networks as well. And maybe uh, we can make a small collections of this because entering um, a European network, it means that we are anyway having uh, different uh, meetings, um, even digital and even personal ones. And during the years, maybe it needs one year or two years, maybe already at the first meeting, we find some nice vibe together. Um, but uh, for me, it's important to uh, meet personally and have a human contact with whoever we are actually sharing the next year. And we're going to face probably loads of administrative challenges and loads of uh, other challenges we don't foresee. I think actually it's funny because with Nina, we haven't met before uh, we created this project. So we just had a digital connection for uh, for a while and it's very rare but since Nina is like such a great person and very skilled and talented and really reliable I'm I'm not just saying because you are here but it's like you know the good good side sometimes you find treasures uh even like that but it's um it's 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 not always so I, I do suggest the personal contacts, uh, uh, networking events and European networks. And I don't know if you have Nina, any reflection on it. How was it to enter in a project without having the relationship before? <laughs> yes, it was a very new experience for us, uh, except of that challenges, what, what I mentioned in, uh, when the project already started. Before that, we were in a process of knowing each other and uh, knowing the, uh, the concept of the idea uh, of the concept uh, applying for the grant. Uh, and uh, I remember uh, how Veronica contacted me and uh, uh, invited to participate in the project. And I was uh, very much uh, impressed uh, with this and uh, very honored actually, you know, it's not every day when uh, people are inviting somebody who they don't know very well into the project and uh, you feel a big responsibility. Okay, so we've never did it before. So what are we supposed to do? What is our next steps? How we can help? How we can uh, um, find uh, this uh, uh, common dots uh, between each other because we're not only from different countries, we've never met before, but we also have a very different uh, schools and we have very different experiences. Like for instance, from our side, from Ukraine, we had students who are not um, a professional artists yet, right? So how to implement them into the project? Can they do that? You know, can they manage it? Because it's not only about your professional skills, but it's also about your uh, how they can communicate, how can they understand other people, how they can uh, understand the conception of what it's needed and uh, get this idea um, 
work with this idea, you know, so it was many different steps for us. We also were facing a little bit of, uh, through this application process, uh, the documents process, because uh, we also found out that our academy cannot be, cannot apply, you know, so it's also a lot of uh, technical issues. Uh, uh, that's, that's why we found out another project, a partner from Ukraine, which is a charitable foundation who was also became a part of uh, this project. Um, so uh, with the uh, step by step, we were facing different uh, problems and we were trying to find the solution on it when we are already in the middle of the process. And it was interesting. And it's still not over. So <laughs> we're in a, in a process. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, it's really great you mentioned the other organization, because I think it's very important who is our contact and who we are talking to, uh, because in there are many bigger organizations. So maybe we are talking to a person and then that person is very nice. We establish a great human relationship, but that person is not a decision maker in the organization. And then one day is just maybe change the work, change uh, something, or the we don't even have with the boss, let's say, a relationship. So, uh, but that person is taking decision, obviously, on the organization. So I think it's very important whenever we have a partnership, uh, the best when we know the de decision maker and then the person who is involved in the project at a coordination level. Uh, the best is when these two person is the same, because then we can go very, very easily and very fast. But for example, I can just tell you some, like in this case, it was great because Nina was uh, always uh, organizing everything and solving the problem. And I know that behind the scenes, she was like really struggling with the organization and the decision maker we actually have the partnership with. Or I can say another example, which is with Juan, we had a project together with um, in our partnership uh, called uh, Educircation. And uh, one year we passed on to the German partner to be the coordinator and uh, the project was accepted. The project was a winner. We got like, I don't know, 200,000 euro. It was like a big thing for uh, five partners of us. And then that person who was our coordinator quit the company and the company decided not to keep the project. So we all lost the project and we lost the money because the coordinator uh, and the boss of the coordinator decided not to keep the project and whatever I tried to do to take over the project or to keep it, we just couldn't. So it's, I think in networking is always important to know in the name of who the person is talking and who is the decision maker. And if there is two different person decision maker and uh, the operative person, then the best if we know both of them. Uh, also, this is happening now with uh, this other project we are just finishing with, uh, with, uh, with our partner from Cyprus, that we had a project coordinator, we made the application, we won. And then during the two years, we have another five project coordinator. I can't even remember the name of the person anymore. So we are, it's just changing all the time. And whenever I'm asking for like, guys, where is our money? We have already spent it like a half a year ago, what you need to transfer to us. I don't know who to ask it from, and there is somebody, the boss in the back, but I actually hardly can reach it. And so it's like, um, in I think in networking, this is very important, or in project designing. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, if you have something to share about any experience, please uh, do it. And also we can go to the European networks just to collect some 
and networking events so you can uh, you can uh, use it for your objectives something to share i, I have a small uh, story to share as well um it's your experience exactly reminded me my previous experience uh, when uh, i established the foundation uh we uh, already uh, made a project so we won a small grant uh, to uh, make an event uh, with the uh, ukrainian uh, students and also with a german artist uh, in the uh, lviv state circus and uh, we were very happy that this is uh, happening they had a small tour around the cities and the gala show supposed to be in the circus so this is the partners whom we found uh, from another partners, basically from uh, through our friends we know already. And uh, the horrible thing was very stressful. It's not only when you're uh, meeting people and it's about the human factor, but it's also about the money because you're signing contracts and uh, uh, they already made an event uh, in the circus and they left, but the money still didn't come. So the thing is that the, uh, it wasn't nobody's fault. Uh, they were just frozen in some bank, uh, transit bank uh, from where the money were coming to Ukraine. And uh, you also need to uh, bear in mind in this case, if you are doing some sort of this uh, project, uh, so you are as an application have a, a financial responsibility. So you need to be also be prepared to cover the costs if it needed, for instance, or to make another arrangements, uh, another negotiations to say like we can pay but in a month, for instance, or later, or something like that. So it's a lot of unpredictable things happening while you are establishing these collaborations, this uh, project. So you need to be ready for different things, human factor, financial factor, <laughs> many, many others. But uh, the shorts, uh, but the, everything went well. So everything worked well. <laughs> yeah. I have a, a question actually concerning this um, because I think in all of our lives, money is very important and being paid for work that we're doing. And when you're doing a large project like this, because uh, I, I know that uh, my wife, she runs a, a nonprofit here in Greece that works with uh, creative arts uh, with youth uh, called Creative Youth Land. Um, and we've, we've actually experienced very similar uh, stories uh, as to what you both shared, um, where uh, partners uh, drop out or uh, funds don't arrive. And what I'd like to ask from many of you that are working in this field and working with grants and knowing that the money is not, uh, not always guaranteed, um, Sorry, uh, the, the, the money is not, is, is, pardon me, for the, the money sometimes is there, <laughs> but, but you're not sure. How do you plan uh, and, and sustain yourselves and your organizations uh, around that kind of, um, that 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 kind of ugh, my words are not coming to me. This is my first language, and I I have a hard time. So please, <laughs> I oh gosh, what are my words today? So <laughs> I'm yeah. I, it's going to take me a while to get through this. The financial landscape whatever word, that's what I'm going to use. Financial landscape is uncertain. You don't know about the money and, and you're also receiving the money much later in the future. Sometimes you get packets of it up front to use for the project, but how does it then sustain the people that are working for your organization? Or if you're an individual, how is that then used to pay for your, for cost of living? Because as organizations, when you're doing all of the management work, when as artists doing the performance and creation, 
we're living and we are spending money. And so this, this is work. This, this is work. It's, it's not a, a charitable thing. We are getting funds to do this work for the government, for Europe. And I'm wondering how, how is that balanced at the end of that we want to put the money into creating the project that goes back out to everyone, but the organization, individuals, et cetera, they need to take care of themselves. It doesn't sound like a single project is something that can sustain a single a person because it takes many people to work on a project. And so what's yeah, the balance? Think... Do you need a lot of projects in order to get that together? Is it has to be mixed with other gigs, other, uh, other work from outside? Yeah, I what think so. Take? What you are asking is something very important because actually we have to be prepared financially also to... Um, uh, to finance a project because many times uh, actually not 100% financed uh, the project by the program. So, and even if it's 100% financed, we finally find out other costs. And uh, so, and also we get uh, sometimes one and one year or one and a half year later, uh, the 20%, so the last installment. So it's a yes, the bad news is that we need to finance the project. Uh, we have to have a couple of thousand euro in our uh, pocket to be able to finance until the money arrives and also to be able to finance uh, until the last installment is arriving. So yes, bad news and it is true. <laughs> but do, do we then take the work that is being created for this and you, let's say like charge for events in order to finance, the, get those funds out. So you use the the, the uh, framework of this uh, grant. I and, think at the beginning we were just working for free for a while <laughs> until either you can have some uh, money you put in like actual money you have on your bank account uh, and then you can uh, create a bridge between uh, the two moments uh, when uh, uh, when uh, the money arrives and when uh, you already have to start to pay the costs. And the other is when you are actually putting your own salary to the end of the project. So um, you just get your money and maybe as much money as possible, but usually is your own salary at the last uh, moment when the final financement, uh, the final installment is arriving. So, uh, yes, we have to be strong financially. As as big the project is, as stronger we need to be financially and put an own contribution or at least some uh, money for, for uh, giving the credit. But, for example, in Erasmus+, Plus, you find 100% uh, uh, financement and then you can uh, have a smaller scale of projects. So that's why uh, many European calls has like small scale ones and then you actually enter to other levels when you have like more um, uh, a more stable situation and also um, already experience how to coordinate such projects. So you'd probably say that the uh, Creative Europe fund and all of this, it's really geared towards larger arts organizations that have people working on multiple projects at a time. And it might be a little more difficult. I mean, I know that in the presentations, uh, there was some talk about a like a solo artist applying for certain things. And I just wonder, is it even feasible <laughs> in the reality of how these uh, projects are quite large in scope and they require multiple partners? Mm. I I do suggest you also to be an, a member of a network 
um and also to go to these networking events and i think gabor just mentioned a smaller scale project um cultural uh, move 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 on culture or uh, what was that which is totally available for individuals maybe we can actually we need to go back to the main room because uh, the other groups are already there and we can also ask it from Gabor again, uh, because he wanted to mention, uh, and that's actually a, a good project for individual artists as well, and you can apply, and that's uh, not for organizations, but for you as an artist yourself. That could be an interesting thing. Uh, wow, 60 seconds we have. Guys, yeah, I I'm hope... closing. So please come back to the main room. Okay, so hi, I, I don't know uh, which which way we should go. Uh, for me, Susanna is here. So please, Susanna, ask ask your question or, or what, what would you like to hear about more? Uh, was everything clear in my presentation? Um, hello. Uh, yeah, I have one uh, question regarding the um, individual mobility for artists. Uh, if it's somehow linked to the um, residency uh, residency places, if you as an artist want to travel uh, and use this mobility, if you have to go to a residency, or if it's even possible to uh, apply for a residency and combine these two, or not. Okay, yes. So you mean to participate in the the part of the call, which is for which is the residency action, and as well participate in the other one in the individual mobility call, as well. Yes, that's your question. If it's linked or if it's not, and um... no. Uh, so basically, in the individual mobility, you can choose whatever organization and even whatever artist uh, you would like. So uh, the main thing is that you get uh let's say an invitation letter from that organization or from that artist or cultural professional uh and then you you must go abroad so you must travel to another creative europe country to basically do do anything whatever you like because the again the the priorities are like some something like explore share create so it's, it's it's very basic, uh, you know. The, the application is is on the Goethe Institute portal, is the easiest one, um, and and there basically you should you should write down what you would like to do, uh, with with your uh, with your partner that you are going to travel to, and then basically that's it. Thank you. Okay, let's uh, let's continue with Sophie. Yes, hello. I was already considering to apply for this Culture Moves Europe uh, okay. with a small residency program, and I was wondering, like, is it possible to apply for like multiple with like multiple organizations, or it's a one, a one on one? Uh, it's, the rule is like uh, uh, you should go to one place, stay there with one organization so it's like you must travel abroad but then you should you should be there uh, during your whole residency uh, I, I mean rather that can like i i mean the bigger program but it's the residency action is it like between like you can invite people right is it like organizing a... yeah if, if you apply as an organization for the residency action then you should be able to uh, invite uh, uh, artists for for a mobility and then you should be able to to provide them with necessary accommodation provide them with mentoring pro and uh, provide everything uh, that that they need during their residency so that's one one step ahead but if you are asking about individual mobility you just have to choose any organization on any artist that uh, that will in will invite you mm -hmm. I, I was interested in the residency action and I was wondering if it can be a program where you have like multiple organizations and that you have like a, like a mentoring program for a creation that they 
I don't know, travel to multiple organizations for different in different times for different residencies, or if it's just oh, like okay. for so, one residency that is I, I couldn't formulate the question right. <laughs> I think. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so if you if you are interested in the residency action, of course, uh, if if you apply as a as a as an organization for the residency action, it's basically it's impossible to to have everybody at your residency at the same time. I, 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 I'm not sure I, I understood your question, but but of course, then you should invite, you know, like uh, at different times or different uh, periods, the different artists to your residency. I, 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 okay, is it, is not, it it's, what you're asking? It's, or... it's not quiet, but it's it's okay. I kind of understand. I think as an organization, if I apply for residency action, I can only like host artists. I cannot facilitate that like a mentoring program that, for example, I choose a project that gets mentored or gets residences in multiple places. That's not something I can. No, no. Make Actually, it fit. if you apply yeah. as a residency, as, as if you welcome, you know, like artists as a yeah. res residency, then you should post them. And this call is for basically for that. just that. What you're okay. talking about maybe uh, is is like a cooperation with other organizations. Maybe it's uh, it 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 can be put uh, put uh, in a pair from Europe or uh, a European cooperation call for sure. But then again, yes. it's not not the same uh, level or not the not the not the same thing, of course. But for a residency, yeah. if you apply as a as a residency host, then it's basically it's only that you're hosting. Uh, yes. Because. Okay. Yeah, that's that's key. And can I have one more short question? Is it yeah. if it's an individual mobility? Uh, the UK is not part of it at the moment. If I understand unfortunately, that. unfortunately, no. the UK is okay. not part of the Creative Europe program okay. anymore. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, so uh, continue with uh, Georgina. Hi. Um, I have a question. I think it was about um. Creative Europe cooperation projects. Yeah. Basically, in one slide, you said as a coordinator, you need to have legal existence. What does that mean? Okay. So, uh, in a European cooperation project, uh, basically only organizations can apply. And if you put it like a, in a fancy way, an organization is a legal entity which is established. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And uh, and even more, if you are a coordinator of a European cooperation project, you have to be established at least for two years at the time of application. Mm -hmm. So if you are a partner, uh, a member organization in the cooperation project, it, it, this rule doesn't apply for you. So basically, you could uh, be uh, established like one week ago or something like that. But if you are the coordinator, you have to be established uh, at least two years before uh, before the time of application. Okay, all right, thank you. That's good. Uh, Sophie, do you have a question regarding this? Or okay. yes, I have a question regarding this. I was wondering, like, a private company does it count as yes, a legal entity in that situation? So you can have a private company and apply with that. Yeah, of course. Uh, the main main thing is the project. The project itself has to be non-profit. This means that your uh, incomes are the same as your expenditure. But mm -hmm. uh, the organizations, basically, it doesn't matter. It can be a non-profit company. Okay. It can be a for-profit company. It can be a university. It can be, uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, association. Or association, or, or it can be anything. Uh, at least it, it has a, a legal entity. So it, okay. it's established under... Uh, some national law. Okay, right. Thank you. So, um, Tina, I I don't know if you, if I pronounce your name correctly. Sorry, but uh, Tina. Uh, Tina. Okay. Uh, I don't really have a question now that we were uh, talking about the this last thing. Uh, yeah, actually, we just if we don't have any organization established, then we can just find one and apply through this one. That's right. Huh? Basically, Basically. It, it's, it depends on, you know, uh, always, uh, I always say to, to, to applicants that uh, these corporations 
are always based on trust. So if you if you uh, have an organization that uh, that is willing to cooperate with you this way, that actually you apply through them, then of course it's it's okay. But you know then. Uh, uh, legally, you know, it, it's an interesting question. If you are not part of this organization, because the, the number one rule is that you, if you are a member of a project, you, I mean, as an organization, uh, that organization has to coordinate the project. So uh, basically this question arises when uh, when we get a lot of times the question that uh, if I, if I, um, um, have like a, a person like a project manager that that I that I or, or a management company let's say or a grant application writer company uh, can I do that and the official answer is that you cannot do that because then the coordination is out of the organization of what what applies so so legally it's a, basically you have to have a contract with that organization uh, basically, the, that contract can be only for the duration of the project, but still, uh, you you have to have a contract because then your if you have a contract with them, like uh, then you are inside that organization or you have some legal uh, connection to that organization. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and if uh, in the past there was a contract, it doesn't matter. It Sorry? belongs to the past. If uh, someone was in this organization in the past, doesn't yeah. mean that it can apply for future projects. Um, it needs to be in a contract yeah. again. So if, project. if yeah, during project implementation, uh, you have to have this this contract with with the with the organization. Yes. Okay. Um, if you have more questions, please shoot. Or if you have some topics that you would like me to talk about, which was not very clear or not very detailed in my presentation. Okay, Susanna, you have a question, so please. Um, yeah, following up on what Sofia was asking regarding the um, residencies, I was trying to uh, search, meanwhile on Google, <laughs> to find a list of the organizations which uh, received this uh, residency uh, money. So we would know as artists like where we can apply for a residency then, uh, but I couldn't find it uh, within the. Yeah, minute. I think because uh, you know this uh, Culture Muse Europe started uh, uh, last year, the first round, mm -hmm. the first round of Injo Mobility started last October and lasted until this May, but the first residency action call started like this year, so I think uh, that uh, the the results are not published yet. Uh, okay. Because because uh, this is uh, the residency action is, is special in a way that it 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 is two step application. So first you apply like uh, generally what uh, what uh, cultural sector you're in, uh, what kind of artists you are looking for to host, and so on. And after that, when you are selected uh, with in this first round, then you have to have this uh, this more detailed. Uh, application in which you you uh, you have some time to select all your artists and then you have to have these these info cards sent in that these will be the artists that I will host as a residency and I think uh, this uh, this autumn I think this should be done now this selection but I think they they haven't published the the results yet um we as a as a circus organization, we are at the moment hosting volunteers, which are kind of doing also something like a residency, but also helping out as a volunteer. So it's like okay, uh, under the European Solidarity Corps program. Okay. Um. So I wanted to ask if uh, this hosting uh residency, if it has an any advantages over the volunteer uh, European Vol voluntary solidarity program. Um, as I mentioned, that uh, synergies are always encouraged between different programs. But of course, for the same program, uh, you cannot have two different EU fundings. So if it's the same program, and that's that's uh, the, the emphasis in it's it's on the if it's the same program, then you cannot have 
two different EU funding for that. So you have to decide if it would be a, a solidarity corps or a volunteering program in Erasmus or something, or it would be a Creative Europe uh, grant. But if you if you if you have different projects, uh, then of course uh, you have to to prove that these are different projects and have a one solidarity corp project and another one uh, from from Culture Museum Europe or Creative Europe funding. Of course, that's possible. And the process from starting to apply for the first. Uh part in the second part of the residence uh, residency program how much time goes over it so let's uh, let's see concretely i think uh, the application deadline this year for the residency action was in january uh if i'm not mistaken oh sorry no uh, the publication date was in, in in january or in february and uh, the the selection date was in june so the, the deadline was in June, and I think uh, in September the, the the selected organizations were informed, and they said that during during the autumn they they should select. So they had like uh, I think two months or something like that, two or three months, uh, to select the 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 artists that they will host. So if you look at it like that, then from the deadline, I think it's can be about half a year until you can implement uh, the residency action as a host. And if you apply as as uh, for the for the individual mobility, uh, our colleagues in Brussels asked us to to tell every applicant that please at least uh, try to have four months at least between your application and the time of of your. Um, starting your your residency because of course only after that that you signed uh, your contract you can start your residency and uh, there is a deadline every end of the month and if you applied like in the uh, first half of the month still they they they, they uh, uh, don't do anything with your application until the end of the month that's when the the uh, you know the 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 jury uh, first sees your application and then they they evaluate your application and after that uh, you have to if if you got selected then then you have to uh, make the contract and that's why they say that at least please uh, leave a four month uh, gap between your application and the start of your residency uh, period Maybe one more small question regarding this. Uh, last year, they opened a special um, individual uh, this mobility for professionals for Circus Strada meeting, general meeting. Uh, do you know by any chance if this will happen again this year? Uh, you mean, I, I think, I, I don't know if I understand correctly, but this was uh, this was something that uh, Circus Strada did because then that's there. Uh, uh, or or was it like uh, because I I don't remember if the Culture Moves Europe team I mean who coordinate the project if they did something like that they have uh, what they do is like they have uh, uh, these events called Question Time, which uh, then you can you can every Friday there is this basically information session, and if you have any questions regarding uh, the individual mobility or the residency action, you can ask them directly because they are implementing uh, the Culture Moves Europe program, Goethe Institute. And out of the four Fridays of a month, three usually is about uh, the individual mobility and one is about the residency action. But uh, but uh, going back to your question, I it was something, this event was something like a matchmaking or... A, a... Um, yeah, so there is a general meeting each year uh, organized by Circo Strada um and the moment like when we were preparing for traveling there um we already applied for the individual uh, mobility for professionals uh because we ah, okay 
And your project uh, and was like to go to the Circo Strada meeting. Yes, and okay. afterwards, uh, Circo Strada um, themselves, they opened the possibility to apply to them directly. Yes, it was directly, but it was money from the um, individual mobility for professionals. But they somehow, like, as Circo Strada applied for a bigger amount of people, and then they... <laughs> then maybe Circo Strada, Strada applied, Circo Strada applied Strada. for the residency action, and that's how they, they could... I'm not Maybe. sure, but but Maybe. you know, because I, I I didn't know about this, so that's what I'm guessing that they applied for the residency action, and that's how they could invite, because that's the whole meaning of the residency action. That if you are yeah. uh, if you are holding a residency, then you can invite artists or cultural professionals uh, mm -hmm. to your residency. So the residency is not only for artists, but also for professionals. Yeah, cultural professionals. I mean, it's it's not only for artists. If you are like a, a project manager in culture, mm -hmm. it, it it also could be eligible. If you go, for example, like a, something like a job shadowing, like how how somebody does project management in a different Creative Europe country or something like that. So that's, that, that's up to you to decide. So uh, uh, it's just important that that you don't have to be an artist and you don't have to like co-create something uh, because there are other possibilities as well. Thank you. So anybody else? You know that, uh, of course, I don't really want you to to go but you have the possibility to join other breakout rooms uh i i don't know if you if if it if, if, if it was clear to you but of course i am more than happy to ask uh answer any of your your questions if you have some more or um, please tell me what should I, what what should i uh, tell you about can yeah. you just speak a little bit more about like the mobility grant and then if it's not just for like moving around and making creations, what else it can be applied to other than like project management and shadowing? Okay, so um, the individual mobility grant is uh, is open for, for projects coming from uh, different sectors, but not all of cultural sectors. It is open for cultural heritage, architecture, design, fashion, uh, music, uh, performing arts, visual arts. I think that's all. So, and in these uh, cultural sectors, um, if you're an artist, uh, then maybe you will co-create uh, or maybe you will, uh, I don't know. It's also a possibility to to apply uh, for like uh, going to, like Susanne mentioned, going to an event uh, to be there. Of course, there, there has to be a, a very good reason why you want to attend that event, and of course, uh, there is always, you know, there always has to be a result of your project. So, uh, if you are an artist and you go there, like uh, uh, to to co-create something, it's it's very easy to understand that you will have a result. If you are, uh, I don't know, you will have a, a performance as, a performance as a result, or if you are a musician, you will uh, make a song together, or if you are a, a Come, if you're coming from visual arts, you will have a, a painting or you will have a sculpture or something like that. But if you are, for example, a project manager, it's also possible uh, to go to to a residency and uh, to to really get into details, for example, for an application to a European cooperation project. That's also possible. So basically, uh, because in European cooperation project, uh, um, the the pre work or or the work that you do before the project is not eligible, so you cannot finance it from the project budget. But uh, with Culture Moves Europe, it's possible that you apply for funding just to go there and to talk about another collaborations and uh, and set up set up a project, uh, which you will apply, for example, for the European Cooperation Project. That's that's also possible. So uh, did I did I understand uh, answer your question? Yes, you did. And also then, so can you just tell me like when the deadline is for this or when it opens? 
Okay, so the the individual mobility is is mm -hmm. like a rolling call. Oh yeah, once a month. Yeah, so okay. at the end of the month, uh, they you know they close uh, like they don't close because then of, co of course the next month you can also apply, but they they uh, gather all the applications that came in that month and then there is uh, this uh, selection process, and in the next month they do the same and. Uh, I encourage you to, uh, I, I don't want to uh, hurry you or something, but of course, in the last month, at least that's what happened in this year, uh, that in the last month, there are always more applications because then it's the last month. So if you apply before, even this month or next month, maybe, but just maybe, you have a bigger chance to, to get the grant because if you apply in the last month, uh, a lot of people uh, apply at the last month because that's that's the last chance. Uh, and with okay. the residency and with the residency action, the the uh, the deadline is in January, uh, January the sixteenth, I think. But this was in my presentation. And then, sorry, do I sorry. Add... Yeah. Go just, ahead, to, just to finish with this one, like. So you apply once you apply on a monthly thing, and yeah. then where how long between like your application and then like finding out if you're successful? How much time should you give it? That's that's what I said. That you should that, that okay. So that you should give at least four months between your application okay. uh, date and the start of your of your uh, residency. But I think uh, they promise that uh, I think the two months uh, that they will give you an answer in two months. But of course, like uh, administration, uh, you know, like uh, bureaucracy is not, you know, mm -hmm. it's something to consider. So that's why uh, if if you would like to be sure, then then leave a four months period between your application date and and the start of your residency. Okay, thank you. Okay. And and sorry uh, to say this, but uh, again, uh, additional information that you have uh, after signing uh, the contract, you have one year to to complete uh, your, your your residency. Yes. Okay. Cool. Thank you. It was one of the most uh, nice processes to go through project wise uh, that I've done. Like this oh, that, one. That, that's good. To it was really good. Okay, Sophie, you had a question. Yeah, that is very encouraging. Yeah, uh, I think I wanted to ask something that you answered now, but I have a very different question about the cooperation project. Um, I don't know if it's enough time to write it because the deadline is the end of January. But basically we have a prepared uh, application, uh, Visegrad Plus, yep. for a mentoring and residency program with three partners. And I don't know if it, if we have this already and we have our partners, do you think it's enough time to prepare the cooperation project on the basis of that? You know, it's it's very hard to, to <laughs> answer these kind of questions because, of course, uh, uh, okay, start start from the beginning. If you don't have partners, if you don't have an idea what to apply with, then uh, we tell applicants that it's at least half a year, but even more. Okay. Uh, if you if you don't have anything, if you have partners, uh, if you have if you have the idea, then of course it depends on you how fast can you write. I don't want to joke about this, but of course you know there are yeah. for somebody it just just let's say takes two weeks to write everything. In a cooperation project this year, the maximum that you can write is fifty pages. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, the the you know. You cannot exceed fifty pages, uh, okay. so <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's a lot. But um, the good news is, uh, if if you if you miss this uh, January deadline, it's January the twenty third. Uh, there will be another call during next year, during the autumn, like like this year. I don't mm -hmm. know the exact dates, even I don't know the exact months, but I can tell you that there will be uh, a, a next next call. Uh, so you're handing on the next one, basically. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, and for the because every year cooperation yeah. project is, is every year, so that's for sure. Yeah. And for that, how long does it take to be 
to get the results out. Okay, so that's that's a longer process because it's like, yeah. that's it's like half a year to from the deadline. It's half a year, okay. uh, like the evaluation. Uh, they usually say less, but okay, f let's say five months. Um, now the, I think now they're saying that uh, the, the the deadline is in January, and then they will inform the applicants like in uh, somewhere around I think July, but then of course during the summer break, everybody is on summer break, so the 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 grant uh, application process will take place during autumn. Uh, so and. And of course, for the co cooperation project, it's also true that you can begin your project only if your grant agreement is signed. So basically, if you if, if you apply this January, you can start your project at the earliest, I think, end of next year somewhere. It, it depends on how fast yeah. the contracting process goes. So basically, it, if I have something that would start 2025 March, then I should yeah. hand it in now in January. <laughs> Basically, yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. Just because that, I because to then see. if you apply for the next call, it's too uh, late. Yes, it's too late mm. for for because okay, okay uh, there is a, there is a, you know there is a possibility if 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 you can if you can argue that you must start your project beforehand, I mean before uh, signing the contract, uh, it's not automatic, but it. It can be possible that you can start earlier, but I think uh, maybe it's uh, you know uh, it, it's 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 only in just very justifiable cases. So uh, if you want to be sure uh, for a, for an event in twenty twenty five March, then you should apply now. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, Chenge, welcome. Hello, I'm in the neighbor in Veronica's room. I'm checking if you are ready to to go back to the main room or you still have some interesting things. Ah, to okay, do. okay. <laughs> so I'm just popping no. in and out. <laughs> okay, so uh, do you have any more questions? Okay, Suzanne. Uh, a very short last one. I uh, think I remember from the in individual mobi mobility for artists that there is written that you can't apply uh, to perform somewhere else. Is that correct? Um, so the rule is that that it's that this uh, uh, this grant is not for like touring because perform Europe is for touring. So uh, so in a sense, it's true, but also it's not true because if if the result of your project is that you perform somewhere it can happen but only if you would like to you know uh, if you would like to have a concert you have a band and you would like to have a concert to have in another country that's not possible because because it's not you know it's not that project it's just a concert but mm -hmm. if you go there co-create there with somebody and then there is a performance or there is a concert at the end it's possible but just to go there to make a performance and because it's a residency program, so you have to be there at least seven days. So just to have a concert is just one day, you know, so it's it's not a residency then. So that's the whole uh, logic behind behind the, the, the grant. OK, thank you. You're welcome. So uh, as far as I understood, you we have to go back to the main room now. So thank you very much for joining me. me. And uh, if you, you have uh, any questions, contact me or contact my colleagues at the at your the Creative Europe desk of your countries. Thank okay. You very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank All you. Right. Bye. Bye. Let's see. Uh, I cannot enter the general chat. Ah, okay. There was this question from someone in the main chat and I don't know how to find them because I think it was a question uh, that could be addressed here, you know, in the good advices section. Let's see, let's see. 
Mm, it's from Sean and Maria. Well, I Let's see if someone enters uh, that they can let them know that we are here. So uh, <clears throat> I'm not sure what what you guys would like to 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 speak about. Um, in like we left this this room uh, so that also people that have already done uh, projects can be can be with us. Um. I don't know. Have has any of you done projects again? Any kind of projects like a uh, small scale or bigger scale? Being a participant or a coordinator? No. So none of you guys have done a project before, or being being a participant. Hello, Marianthi. Hello Hi. to all. Hello to all. Uh, you mean a project that uh, was founded uh, or just a project, an in initiative? Well, a project that was funded either by the Creative Europe or mm -hmm. from the European Commission in general, as in the Erasmus Plus project, because the Erasmus Plus actually has been my, like, where I started. And it's more like a little bit more of a comfort zone for me. And like the um, Creative Europe was like this, like was my my premiere with with Creative Europe, but um, I see a lot of I see, I see a lot of um, <clears throat> of similarities uh, when you're running a funded project by the European Commission. Uh, so I just wanted to know, like, where you guys are standing? Have you never done a project before, or a project funded by the European Commission? I mean. In our collective space, we hosted um, um, a project uh, from Erasmus Plus, but because we don't have a legal form yet, uh, okay. we it was um, we were not seen as uh, collaborators, and we we were not uh, participating in the designing, but in a very uh, specific um, part of the project, like hosting and facilitating um, one. Um, to say uh, event of the project. Yeah, well, event. Yes. Uh -huh. yes, yes, yes. So um, only this. Okay. Uh, Lena, are you from, like, you speak English or? Yes, yes, I do. Yes, I do. Mm. I'm from Greece. Ah, Orea, Orea. I'm sorry, I'm not Sorry, mm. Orea. Ah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ε, Α, δεν άτομα που μιλούν ελληνικά κάπως αυτό Οπότε είναι... να μιλήσουμε ελληνικά Οπότε ναι. θέλετε μπορούμε να μιλήσουμε ελληνικά Μόλις μπει mm -hmm. κάποιος που μιλάει ελληνικά Θα πούμε oh, yes, hello. Θα γυρίσουμε ναι. <laughs> <laughs> Να ακούτε ναι, Καλησπέρα Γεια σας ε, Ρε παιδιά μπορεί να βγει κάποιος Και να καλέσει Αν θέλουν σε ένα, με, με μήνυμα Γιατί εγώ τώρα μάλλον δεν μπορώ να πω ε, την, ε, Κάτσα να ξαναδώ τα ονόματά τους Κάνανε μια, είχαν μια πολύ ενδιαφέρουσα ερώτηση. Σωτηροπούλου, Μαρία και ο Σόν. Πες να μπορεί κάποιος από εσά να βγει από το breakout room και να ρωτήσει τον Πέντεγκους πώς μπορούμε να τους καλέσουμε στο δικό μας αν θέλουν να μπουν, γιατί δεν ξέρω, εντάξει, μπορεί να έχουν πάει κάπου αλλού. Τέλος πάντων. Ποιους εγώ... θέλουμε να καλέσουμε. Τον ε, Σόν και τη Μαρία, mm. αλλά και πάλι μπορεί... Σόν και Μαρία. Μαρία Σωτηροπούλου. Και πάλι το, βέβαια, chat, αμ... α, sorry, sorry. το chat δεν ε, τους βγάζει, βγάζει μόνο εμά. Τέλος πάντων, αυτό που μου φάνηκε ενδιαφέρον είναι ότι τα παιδιά κάναμε μια ερώτηση στο πώς ε, εξισορροπείς ε, το ότι ως καλλιτέχνες του τσίρκο δεν έχουμε συνήθως σταθερή δουλειά και σταθερό μισθό και το ότι κάπως ε, μπορεί να γίνει μια, μια ισορροπία ας πούμε, μεταξύ της δουλειά που χρειάζονται αυτά τα project για να υλοποιηθούν και το πώς τα βγάζουμε τα προς το ζήν μας το οποίο το θεωρώ, ρε παιδί μου, κάπως εξαιρετική ερώτηση. Ε, δεν είμαι σίγουρη ακριβώς ότι έχω απάντηση. Απλώς επειδή, ξέρεις, είμαστε εδώ, ρε παιδί μου, έτσι στα good advices, ε, η δικιά μου εμπειρία λέει ότι... 
Δυστυχώ, εγώ πάντα ξέρεις, ξεκινάω ή θα το ξεκινάω λίγο να το reality check και μετά πάω στο ωραία. Ε, Δυστυχώ το... τα προγράμματα αυτά δεν είναι για να μα συντηρήσουν, παιδιά, κακά τα ψέματα. Εντάξει, θα ήταν, θα ήταν πάρα πολύ ωραία να υπήρχε αυτή η πρόβλεψη ε, επειδή όντω οι καλλιτέχνε δεν έχουν σταθερά εισοδήματα. Εντάξει, να υπήρχε αυτή η πρόβλεψη έτσι ώστε να μπορεί να υπάρξει, ας πούμε, και κάποιο είδους σάλαρι. Ε, δεν υπάρχει παρόλα αυτά. Δηλαδή, είδατε και ο, και ο Κιρ Γκάμπορ είπε ότι τα, το ποσοστό, ρε παιδί μου, το, του συνολικού προϋπολογισμού είναι τύπου για τα καλλιτεχνικά 4%. Ξέρω εγώ κάτι τέτοιο. Οπότε δεν υπάρχει. Ας ξεκαθαρίσουμε δηλαδή μη αυτό. Και από εκεί και πέρα, εγώ θεωρώ ότι θα υπάρξει, ναι, έχει να κάνει πολύ με το σχεδιασμό. Έχω υπάρξει σε project από το 2013, έτσι λίγο και με άλλες οργανώσεις και τα λοιπά, έχω υπάρξει σε project που με κανένα τρόπο δεν άξιζε τα λεφτά που έπαιρνα για τη δουλειά που είχα να κάνω. Εντάξει, να το πούμε λίγο χήμα, ρε παιδί μου. Δηλαδή, λες, έχω να κάνω τα show μου, έχω να κάνω τις πρόβες μου, έχω να κλείσω τα show μου, ενώ τα κάνω και ενώ κάνω τις πρόβες, και ταυτόχρονα έχω, ρε παιδί μου, να γράψω κιόλα ε, για το να φιλοξενήσω και τους καλλιτέχνες ε, και κάπως πώς θα γίνουν όλα αυτά και ειδικά έχει και οικογένεια και αυτό είναι ό,τι έχεις ρε παιδί μου. Κάπως δεν, δεν, δεν υπήρχε αυτό το balance αλλά νομίζω ότι περνώντας τα χρόνια ε, βρήκαμε εμεί τρόπο να έχουμε καλύτερο balance. Δηλαδή η Βερόνικα που είχε πιο πολύ εμπειρία, έχει πιο πολύ εμπειρία από μένα άρχισε και αυτή σιγά σιγά να καταλαβαίνει ότι ρε εσύ θα παίξουμε με τους αριθμούς, καλή ώρα που λέει και η Βερόνικα το budget είναι φίλος μας. Θα παίξουμε με τους Παιχνίδι. Ναι, με ένα τέτοιο τρόπο, ώστε να είναι υπέρ μας. Απλώς, για όλα τα πράγματα για τα οποία δεν έχουμε εμπειρία, ε, προφανώς οι ώρες που θα χρειαστεί να αφιερώσουμε, παιδιά, από πολλές φορές μπορεί να χρειαστεί να είναι περισσότερες. Άμα Είσαι... δεν το πάρουμε σαν παιχνίδι, χάνουμε την μπάλα. Έτσι, Μπορούμε κάπως. να χάσουμε πολύ εύκολα την μπάλα διότι αριθμών, διότι... Και εγώ, και εγώ αυτό πιστεύω, θέλει ουσία. λίγο να το δεις, ρε παιδί μου, έτσι λίγο πιο ανάλαφρα και ότι, εντάξει, κάνεις μέχρι εκεί, ρε παιδί μου, που, ξέρεις, μέχρι εκεί που αξίζει να βγάλεις ένα ωραίο project, ρε παιδί μου. Έχω ερώτηση. Για πες το. Ε, σε μία από τις εικόνες είχαν τρία ποσά. Τώρα όλο αυτό πότε ξεκίνησε και πώς είναι, γιατί έχω χάσει σκηνικά νομίζω. Έχουν ήδη κατέβει από Ουγγαρία, εγώ είμαι Ουγγαρέζος και Έλληνας. <laughs> και το ήθελα πολύ να πάρω μέρος σε αυτή τη φάση που είναι συνεργασία ανάμεσα αυτών των δύο χώρων, έχοντας 20 χρόνια εμπειρία στον κόσμο των ζωγκλερικών. Κοίτα, το ε... project έχει ολοκληρωθεί το together. Δηλαδή αυτά τα webinar που κάνουμε είναι στην ουσία το κλείσιμο του προγράμματος. Έγινε η Ελευσίνα τον Ιούνιο και το Βέσπρεμ έγινε το Σεπτέμβριο. Οπότε αυτό ήταν μια διαδικασία που εγώ με τη Βερόνικα ετηθήκαμε περίπου δύο χρόνια πριν ε, για να έχουμε καλλιτεχνικό διευθυντή από τη Γαλλία, για να έχουμε τους συνεργάτες από Ουκρανία. Είχαν βγει τα open call, τα, ε, δηλαδή είχαν βγει πώς το λένε, ε, open call για audition που έκανε στην ουσία που έγινε online από τον ε, Γάλλο τον διευθυντή, δεν ξέρω αν το είχες δει είχε τρέξει για αρκετό καιρό είχε τρέξει Απρίλιο, Μάιο σε όλα τα social, είχαμε κάνει έτσι ένα μεγάλο φαμούλι ε, οπότε mm. αυτό ήταν για να διαλευτούν οι καλλιτέχνε και αυτό ρε παιδί mm. μετά τρέξαν οι δράσει και οι παραστάσεις Οκ, παραστά... okay, και, το... yeah. και αυτά τα τρία ποσά που περιγράφουν εκεί πέρα που σε ένα σύνολο είναι πάνω από 100.000 ευρώ αυτά τι είναι τι ήταν. Αυτά είχε πάρα πολλά ποσά μέσα η παρουσίαση του Γκάμπορ Αυτά είναι οι προϋπολογισμοί okay. ε, οι, οι εγκεκριμένοι προϋπολογισμοί της Ευρωπαϊκής Επιτροπής για τα καλλιτεχνικά το πο... Ωραία και αυτή η Επιτροπή το... δίνει όλο το ποσό σε μια ομάδα Δηλαδή αυτό είναι πολλές ομάδες από όλο τον κόσμο Οι οποίες παίρνουν μέρος σε κάτι το οποίο σαν θέμα δίνει η Ευρωπαϊκή Ένωση Πάνω στο οποίο η κάθε ομάδα με τον τρόπο της εκφράζεται με την τέχνη μέσω της τέχνης της Κάπως έτσι σκέψου το ναι Δηλαδή βγαίνει ένα κάλεσμα από την Ευρωπαϊκή Επιτροπή Είναι μόνο για τέτοιο, είναι μόνο για 
ε, την Ευρώπη για, για χώρε τη Ευρωπαϊκή ναι. Ένωση. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Τα συγκεκριμένα καλέσματα. Ε, και σου λέει, yeah. ρε παιδί μου, ότι η προτεραιότητά μα, οι προτεραιότητέ μα για αυτή την 7 ετία, ο οδηγό παιδιά του Creative Europe και του Erasmus Plus, οι οδηγοί αυτοί που λέει η Βερονίκα, να καθίσουμε να διαβάσουμε γράμμα προ γράμμα και σελίδα προ σελίδα, υπάρχουν και στα ελληνικά. Είναι όντω καμιά εκατοστή uh-huh. σελίδε. Ωραία, αυτό δεν πειράζει. Εσύ το έχει αυτό το υλικό. Εγώ αυτό το υλικό μπορώ να σα το στείλω. Τέλεια. Οπότε, επειδή μου τα κατεβάσετε και εκεί, αρχίζει και καταλαβαίνει λίγο και τη γλώσσα, το τι σου ζητάει. Γιατί δεν πρόκειται. Και σου λένε, ρε παιδί μου, ότι εμεί έχουμε αυτέ τι προτεραιότητε για την κλιματική αλλαγή, για τη συμπεριληπτικότητα, για το δεν ξέρω εγώ τι, το δεν ξέρω εγώ τι. Γράψε μα τι θα ήθελε, τι θα μπορούσε να κάνει γύρω από αυτό το ζήτημα. Μπορεί να κάνει μια παράσταση, μπορεί να κάνει μια ανταλλαγή νέων και να μιλήσετε για αυτό το κομμάτι, μπορεί να κάνει μια σειρά από παραστάσει. Δηλαδή, Κάτω πρώτα του τους εκφράζουμε γραπτο, σε ναι. γραπτό. Το, ναι, ωραία. Και αυτό θα περάσει μια επιλογή επιτροπή. από την mm-hmm. Επιτροπή. Ναι, και ναι, άμα περάσει, μετά θα πάμε στο δεύτερο στάδιο. Ναι, το, δε, το δεύτερο στάδιο είναι η υλοποίηση. Δεν έχει πολλά στάδια. Θέλω να πω ότι γράφει την πρόταση. Mm. Έγινε σαν, σαν αυτά τα charts. Γράφει μια πρόταση. Δηλαδή το Δεν βιντεάκι εγκρίνεται. που είδαμε πέρασε. Στην ζωή σου εγκρίνεται, υλοποιεί το project. Αυτό είναι το. Δηλαδή το βιντεάκι που είδαμε τώρα λίγο πριν εδώ στο διαδίκτυο ήταν ένα project που πέρασε mm-hmm. και υλοποιήθηκε. Πολύ σωστά. Είναι το together. Ωραία. Και είναι αυτό στα πλαίσια του οποίου κάνουμε και αυτά τα webinar. Γιατί εμεί όταν κάναμε την πρόταση, αυτό που σα έλεγα ρε παιδί μου ότι χρειάζεται λίγο και ένα. Ένα σπάις, ρε παιδί μου, Σου λέω, και, και εγώ ακολουθώ τη Βερόνικα που έχει πολύ, πολύ περισσότερη εμπειρία από μένα. Αλλά αυτό που καταλαβαίνω είναι ότι εμείς είχαμε την ιδέα να κάνουμε αυτές τις δράσεις, τις πολιτιστικές πρωτεύουσε, να ε, μιλήσουμε για όλα αυτά τα ζητήματα, ε, το πώς μπορούν οι άνθρωποι να βρίσκονται ξανά στο δημόσιο χώρο και αυτά και δεν ξέρω εγώ τι, και ως πάνω διάφορα. Λες όμως μετά, οκ. Okay. Τι άλλο παίζει, ρε παιδί μου, αυτή τη στιγμή σαν προτεραιότητες στην Ευρωπαϊκή Επιτροπή. Μπορεί η δικιά μα προτεραιότητα να μην ήταν άμεσα. Εντάξει, να το πω και αυτό, γιατί mm. εγώ δεν είμαι πολύ έτσι τη οθόνη. Αλλά ήταν η προτεραιότητα yeah. του digital era. Οπότε οτιδήποτε έχει να κάνει πλέον με webinar και τέτοια, παίρνει έξτρα πόντου. Και να, που τελικά είπαμε ρε παιδί μου να τα κάνουμε αυτά τα webinar, και που τελικά αυτή, αυτή η σχέση, γι' αυτό που λέει η Βερονίκο, ότι είναι έτσι μια, μια σχέση, αυτή η σχέση με τι προτεραιότητε τη Ευρωπαϊκή Επιτροπή και τα δικά σου όνειρα. Να που βγαίνει σε καλό. Δηλαδή, κάνουμε αυτό το webinar oh. και τελικά, ρε παιδί μου, μπορεί να μην ήταν στην αρχική μα ιδέα, να το βάλαμε, ρε παιδί μου, για να ενδυναμώσουμε την πρότασή μα. Το να... webinar τι σημαίνει. Αυτό που κάνουμε τώρα είναι webinar, Κωνσταντίνε. Τι κάνουμε. Εμεί κάνουμε τώρα ένα webinar. Είναι ένα. Α, ah, σεμινάριο... webinar, όχι yeah. seminar. Yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Δεν κατάλαβα yeah. τη λέξη γι' αυτό, οκ. Right. Okay. Είναι ένα σεμινάριο που λοιπόν, γίνεται online, οπότε λέγεται. Yeah. Αυτό, mm. τώρα δεν ξέρω, αν θέλετε κάτι άλλο να μοιραστούμε, έτσι να πούμε, Παναγιώτη, ε, Ελένα. Εγώ, γεια σας και από μένα, Παναγιώτης, είμαι στην Αθήνα. Σήμερα. Επαγγελματία ζωγκλέρω εδώ και 20 χρόνια, έχω ατομική επιχείρηση, λειτουργώ έτσι δηλαδή με... Oh. Ε, respect. Ναι, ευχαριστώ. <laughs> <laughs> ε, και ε, ήθελα να ρωτήσω, αυτά τα προγράμματα είναι που τα χρηματοδοτεί η Ένωση, είναι μόνο δια, δια, διεθνή, ας πούμε, ή μπορούμε ας πούμε, να συνεργαστούμε μεταξύ ομάδων μέσα στην Αθήνα ή μέσα στην Ελλάδα. Και Όχι, να είναι, είναι, δεν είναι ενδοκινωτικά. Χρειάζεται να είναι με partnerships, με ε, συν, συνέργειες. Κα, καμιά φορά ξεχνάω και τα ελληνικά, τις ελληνικές ορολογίες. Συνέργειες από την Ευρώπη χρειάζεται να είναι τα συγκεκριμένα της Ευρωπαϊκής Επιτροπής. Από εκεί και πέρα... Ε, εγώ θα σου πω ότι μπορείς να δεις σίγουρα ε, τις επιδοτήσεις του Υπουργείου Πολιτισμού και από εκεί και πέρα έχει και όλα τα ιδρύματα δεν ξέρω κατά πόσο σου εκφράζουν ή όχι Νιάρθος Μποδοσάκης, όλα αυτά ρε παιδί μου που βγάζουν καλέσματα ναι. συνήθως δηλαδή θα κοιτάξεις για συμπράξεις ε, εντός χώρας ε, θα κοιτάξεις για χρηματοδοτικούς φορείς της χώρας Okay. Το νόημα νομίζω σε όλα αυτά είναι να συνδεθεί περισσότερο και με άλλου πολιτισμού, άλλε χώρε, να πει μια κινητικότητα μέσα στην Ευρώπη. Είναι mm. αυτό τη ιδιότητα του Ευρωπαίου πολίτη. 
που, ναι. που ψάχνουμε ναι. πάντα. Ότι οκ, okay, είμαστε όλοι από τι χώρε που είμαστε, αλλά ω Ευρωπαίοι έχουμε και κάτι που μα ενώνει, α πούμε. Είναι η ιδιότητα του Ευρωπαίου πολίτη. Που και, και αυτό, α πούμε, είναι πολύ σημαντικό, γι' αυτό και υπάρχουν αυτέ οι μεγάλε δομέ για να υλοποιούνται προγράμματα. Τα Erasmus Plus, α πούμε, είναι εξίσου πολύ ενδιαφέροντα. Εμεί έχουμε ασχοληθεί με Erasmus Plus γύρω από την παιδαγωγική του τσίρκο. Οπότε, ό,τι έχω κάνει εγώ γύρω από ανταλλαγέ καλλιτεχνικού τσίρκου και ό,τι έχει να κάνει με το κοινωνικό τσίρκο και την παιδαγωγική του τσίρκο, τα έχουμε κάνει όλα μέσω Erasmus Plus και κάπω έτσι, που λέω κι εγώ, έτσι άνοιξαν τα μάτια τα προηγούμενα 10 χρόνια. Γιατί πήγαμε Βέλγιο, Γερμανία, Γαλλία, Ισπανία, όπου μπορείτε να φανταστείτε, ρε παιδί μου, είχαμε κάποιου partners. Αλλά ήταν partners από Ευρώπη αυτό. Μάλιστα. Εγώ τώρα σκέφτομαι, δεν ξέρω μήπω και εσένα ίσω ενδιαφέρει. Σίγουρα θα σε ενδιαφέρει εφόσον έκανε το functional juggling και όλα αυτά. Ε, τώρα, εγώ εντάξει, είπαμε 20 χρόνια τι εκδηλώσει και show και τι ήταν και τα άλλα. Έχω κουραστεί λίγο και έχω τώρα προσανατολίζομαι περισσότερο στη, στο, 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 στη, στη διδαχή, στα mm-hmm. workshop, α πούμε. Mm-hmm. Και θα έχει ενδιαφέρον να. Εγώ, να το κάναμε. Εντάξει, εγώ τώρα το ξεκινάω με δύο πράγματα στο μυαλό μου. Το ένα είναι να βρω χορηγούς από ιδρύματα όπως αυτά που είπες εδώ στην Ελλάδα και να κάνουμε πράγματα σε άλλα ιδρύματα που έχουν τα παιδιά ή τους οποιονδήποτε πρόσφυγες κλπ. Στην Ελλάδα να χορηγήσουν δηλαδή αυτοί για να κάνουμε τα προγράμματα εκεί πέρα. Mm. Και το άλλο κομμάτι είναι να κάνουμε τέτοιου είδου προγράμματα εκπαίδευσης, ας πούμε, στα ζωοκλαιδικά περισσότερο, σε εταιρείε για την building activities και τέτοια. Mm, mm, mm. Το οποίο μπορεί να έχει και διάφορες θεματικές εκεί πέρα. Δηλαδή, να τους πεις ότι θα σας... Τι... Δηλαδή, αυτό δουλεύω τώρα. Οπότε, κάτι τέτοιο δεν θα μπορούσε να γίνει συνεργατικά με ανθρώπους στο εξωτερικό και να το Βέβαια. κάναμε. Εννοείται. Βγαίνει τώρα από αυτό το chat, το breakout room και μπαίνει στο breakout room share your ideas. Θέλω να, πω, θέλω να πω ότι ε, αυτό ακριβώς που περιγράφεις είναι ένα πρώτο βήμα ότι, παιδιά, έχω αυτές τις δύο ιδέες. Η μία είναι functional juggling, ε, ένα network, ας πούμε, έτσι, για να συνεχίσουμε να εκπαιδευόμαστε πάνω σε αυτό και να κάνουμε και τις παρεμβάσεις μας, που θα ενδιαφέρει τη Βερόνικα 100% γιατί έχει τρομερή εμπειρία. Είναι στην ουσία ε, το άτομο που ασχολείται με το functional juggling, ε, όπω είναι ο Μάρκο σε εμά, αντίστοιχα είναι η Βερόνικα στην Ουγγαρία. Μπορεί να μα συνδέσει και με το ΛΑΠΟ και με άλλα άτομα που ασχολούνται με αυτό. Οπότε μία ιδέα είναι αυτή και η άλλη ιδέα είναι το πώ μπορούν να γίνουν, α πούμε, ε, πώ το λένε, business training ε, ε, και empowerment ε, επιχειρήσεων ε, εργαζομένων στο HR, α πούμε, μέσω του τμήμα του τσίρκου. Ε, Αυτέ είναι οι ιδέε μου. Ψάχνω partners ε, που είτε έχουν εμπειρία. Δηλαδή, εμένα πάντα μου αρέσει, δεν ξέρω, τώρα ίσως είμαι και σε ένα, σε ένα μετέχμιο. Ε, τε, τέλος πάντων, όλα τα προηγούμενα χρόνια ένιωθα πάρα πολύ ασφαλής με partners που έχουν περισσότερη εμπειρία από μένα. Γιατί όπως και να έχει, εντάξει, το τσίρκο δεν είναι, δεν, οι τέχνες του τσίρκου στην Ελλάδα α, α, ακόμα ε, αναπτύσσονται. Γύρισε, ναι, γύρισε. Ανεβαίνει, ανεβαίνει, ανεβαίνουμε, ανεβαίνουμε. Γύρισε, γύρισε, ανεβαίνουμε. Η, η, η μία η Βέλγια συνεργάτη θα που κάποια στιγμή γύρισε και μας είπε developing country. Ε, τύπου αναπτυσσόμενη χώρα και Αλλά, ξέρω, μία, μία που κοίταξα λίγο έτσι και δεν εννοούσε για το τσίρκο μόνο, εννοούσε γενικά. Μία που τσίρκο είμαστε τσίρκο άντε έτσι, develop. Ναι, και τύπου η γυναίκα ξέρεις μαζεύτηκε χίλια συγγνώμη, λέει, δεν το εννοούσα έτσι. Α, θα της λέω, εντάξει, συμφωνώ, της λέω, μην ανησυχείς. Οπότε και στο κομμάτι του τσίρκου κάπως, ρε παιδί μου, θεωρώ ότι τώρα να πισάμαστε. Βέβαια, βέβαια, εμένα, ας πούμε, με ενδιαφέρει πολύ να αρχίσω να βλέπω τι γίνεται στα Βαλκάνια. Που είναι πολύ yeah. κοντά μας, που έχει αξιόλογες ομάδες. Και Είστε έχει... και κοντά στη Βουλγαρία, εσείς που έχει yeah, παράδοση. Yeah, yeah. Ναι, αυτό, οπότε... Ξέρεις, ε, αρχίζεις και ψάχνεις για partner σιγά σιγά ένα λόγο το τι θέλεις. Θέλεις εσύ να εξελιχθείς, θα ψάξεις για πιο ε, έμπειρους partners, οπότε θα ανέβεις πιο βόρεια. Η mm. Βέλγοι, ας πούμε, μπορεί mm. να... Το... Τώρα μια που το αναφέρεις, αυτή η αναζήτηση για τους partners, πώς ακριβώς, ε, ας πούμε, γίνεται. Αυτό το webinar είναι από μόνο mm. του ένα, ένας τρόπος. Okay. Networking. Okay. Ναι, ναι, ναι. Εγώ αυτό, αυτή την ερώτηση δεν καταφέρα να την ε, απαντήσω 
μέσα σε αυτό το χρονικό διάστημα που περίπου είναι 20 χρόνια που ασχολούμαι με ζωγκλερικά, το πώς μπορείς να βρεις το τέρι σου να εξπάνεις μια παράσταση mm. ή ένα άτομο να συνεργαστείς μαζί. Πες να αυτό εγώ σε αυτό, δεν ξέρω. Κοίτα, εγώ <laughs> σούμε, <laughs> εγώ, εγώ ε, ε, έγραψα στο Partner Research το F-Top από την παρουσίαση του Γκάμπορ, οπότε μπορούμε να πάμε πίσω στην, στην παρουσίαση του Γκάμπορ να δούμε εκεί τι γίνεται με Partner Research. Ε, επίσης, έχει πλατφόρμες η Ευρωπαϊκή Επιτροπή μέσα στις οποίες μπαίνει για αναζήτηση συν, ε, συνεργειών και εκεί έχει και πολύ ωραία keywords, βάζεις keyword, ε, τσίρκο, δεν ξέρω εγώ τι, αυτό, ανάλογα το τι σε ενδιαφέρει και σου βγάζει καταγεγραμμένες οργανώσεις. Και μετά φυσικά, παιδιά, πάμε στα social media, έτσι. Θέλω να πω ότι θέλει ψάξιμο η έβρεση συνεργατών. Ε, σίγουρα είναι πιο safe αν κάποιος ξέρει την οργάνωση, κάποιος Α, έχει, πάει... Αυτή, αυτή, ναι, αυτό, κάποιος έχει πάει αυτό, εκεί Εράσμους, κάποιος ναι. έκανε μια ανταλλαγή, κάτι... Ναι, μια προσωπική επαφή, δηλαδή, νομίζω βοηθάει. Ναι, είναι... Να συνεργαστούμε πρώτα εδώ στη χώρα μας και μετά να βρούμε και... Α, παράλληλα ναι, πάνε. Βασικά, κα- ναι, κάποια ναι, ένωση ναι. τσιρκολάνων, δηλαδή, υπάρχει αυτό το ένα... πρόβλημα, ας πούμε... Στην Ελλάδα ναι, υπάρχει κάτι πήγε ένα... να γίνει τώρα στην Αθήνα. Ε, τριν... Υπάρχει ένα πανελλήνιο, ας πούμε. Είχαμε, στην Αθήνα προσπαθήσαμε για ένα σωματείο το οποίο απέτυχε. Αλλά υπάρχει απέτυχε ένα τελικά. σελίδα στο mm. facebook όπου είναι απόλυτη η Ελλάδα κόσμος. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Σαν κοινότητα. Ποια είναι αυτή. Ρε παιδιά, ε... τέτοιες σελίδες. Εγώ είμαι 20 χρόνια ήμουν εξωτερικό και δεν έχω ιδέα πού και πώς και ποιε είναι... Αυτές οι οργανώσεις και αυτά που είπατε πριν ότι θα μπορούσαμε να συνεργαστούμε με διάφορες ομάδες για να προχωρήσει το λειτουργικό ζωγκλερικό. Ε, γενικότερα θα ήθελα να συνεργαστώ με σας με όλους στην Ελλάδα. Ε, πού είσαι, ε, ε, είμαι, είμαι Θεσσαλονίκη τώρα. Έχω καταγωγή από Κατερίνη και ήμουν 20 χρόνια Βουδαπέστη. Έκανα σχολή τσίρκο εκεί πέρα. Α, και από κανείς. τότε... Όλα Τι... μέσα στα ζωγκλερικά. Α, Εκτός ναι. από Psycubes, Cybercubes, πώς λέγονται, αυτά τα κουτιά. Συγκαρμπόξεις. Συγκαρμπόξεις, ναι. ευχαριστώ. Εκτός από αυτά, παίζω σχεδόν με όλα. Ωραία. Ε, από τη Θεσσαλονίκη θα σε δικτυώσει η Μαρία. Όσο μπορώ, Μακάρι. εννοείται. Εννοείται, Είναι... Με το Μαριάνθη... καλό, με το καλό. Μαρία, αν δεις το μονόκυκλο, εσύ το έχει ξεκινήσει δικό σου, δηλαδή. Εγώ το έχω ξεκινήσει, αλλά όλα τα χρόνια το τρέχουμε με ομάδα. Εντάξει, εγώ έχω το βασικό συντονισμό, αλλά νομίζω ότι χωρίς ομάδα δεν θα γινόταν τίποτα. Απολύτως. Εγώ τώρα ψάχνω να βρω μια φάση να διδάξω ζωγκλερικά στη Θεσσαλονίκη. Δεν ξέρω αν χρειάζεται στο μονόκυκλο κάτι τέτοιο. Έχουμε κάνει Μαρκέλα, γι' αυτό δεν σου είπα κάτι. Ε, σίγουρα εγώ θα πήγαινε να δω τι είναι αυτό το μονόκυκλο πρώτα, άμα δεν έχει πάει. Αλλά έχει έρθει ο Κωνσταντίνος, ρε, δεν έχει έρθει. Ναι, ναι, ξέρω πώς. Ε, εννοείται. Α, εντάξει. Ε, Μαζί δεν ήμασταν στο workshop. Αχ, δεν θυμάμαι. Ή μπήκε και η Τζίνα, γεια σου Τζίνα. Ε, ναι, πάντως σε σχέση με αυτό έτσι την... Ε, το να συνδεθούμε περισσότερο ας πούμε, μέσα στην Ελλάδα για να βγούμε μετά και παρά έξω. Επειδή και εγώ την είχα έτσι αυτή την, ε, πώς το λένε, αυτή την ανησυχία, ρε παιδί μου, ότι ξέρεις, εδώ μεταξύ μας δεν μπορούμε να συνεργαστούμε, ας πούμε. Και ήρθαν ε, άνθρωποι έτσι από Ευρώπη καλή ώρα σε αντίστοιχες συζητήσεις. Ναι, μη ανησυχεί καθόλου. Τις περισσότερες φορές τα πράγματα πάνε παράλληλα. Θέλω να πω ότι υπάρχουν ναι, ε, ατο, ατομικότητες, θα το πω, δηλαδή υπάρχουν οργανώσεις καλή ώρα που κάνουν πράγματα με Ευρώπη, φέρνουν πράγματα πίσω, μέσα στη χώρα γίνονται συμπράξεις, ξαναβγαίνουν προς τα έξω και όλο αυτό δεν είναι ότι πρέπει να γίνει το ένα για να συμβεί το άλλο, γιατί ήδη συμβαίνει και το ένα και το άλλο. Ούτε το ένα έχει ανάγκη το άλλο, το... κατάλαβες. Οπότε κάπως ε, είναι μια ωραία ζήμωση. Εγώ έτσι έχω αρχίσει να το βλέπω, ρε παιδί μου, ότι γίνονται πολύ ωραίε ζήμωσεις για το τσίρκο στην Ελλάδα, ε, οι οποίες έρχονται από διάφορες πρωτοβουλίε, είτε ενδοκινοτικές, καλή ώρα ρε παιδί μου τον ε, Πανελλήνιο Σύλλογο ελπίζω να τον καταφέρουμε κάποια στιγμή υποτίθεται ότι έχει μείνει το πράγμα νομικά στο να τσεκαριστούν τα κείμενα ε, είτε και ευρωπαϊκά όπως έγινε πούμε, το Together που ήταν ξέρεις, όλο αυτό έτσι, το, το αλυσβερίσι το ευρωπαϊκό ε, 
κάνεις τζινάκι. Ε, εδώ μόνο ελληνικά σε αυτό το <laughs> Ναι, καλέ, αφού πήγα και λέω τι κάνω. Πάνω καλά. Γεια. Εδώ, αφού είμαι σε αυτό το Τι κάνουν οι άλλοι στα breakout room, για πες. Ε, εσύ που είσαι ε, μπά... Ναι, μπήκα παντού. Είμαι σίγουρη ότι σε μπάτρες. Στο... Το έτσι για τα fundings, funds. Ε, έχει πάει πολύ serious το πράγμα που δεν καταλαβαίνω, πολύ ενδιαφέρον, αλλά έχει πάει πολύ σε organization job and all Εκεί θα Εκεί θα πάω. Ήταν εντάξει, εγώ πήρα αρκετά έτσι μετά. Ε, στις Βερόνικας λέγανε για το πόσο ωραία ήταν που ε, πήγε τη σχολή του Κιέβου. Ε, okay. Και εδώ πέρα προσπαθώ να καταλάβω, δεν κατάλαβα τι λέγατε, γιατί δεν το πιάσα από την αρχή, αλλά Α, δεν πήρα. τίποτα. Λένε περί ανέμων και υδάτων λίγο. Ε, λέγαμε, ρε παιδί μου, για το τσίρκο στην Ελλάδα και τα, τις ευρωπαϊκές πρωτοβουλίες και τα λοιπά. Μάθανε και ο Κωνσταντίνος λίγο περισσότερο το πώς λειτουργεί το πράγμα. Μας έλεγε τις ιδέες του ο Παναγιώτης ε, για το... Που στην ουσία μου το θεώρησε, ας πούμε, αυτό το, το πρώτο βήμα που συζητάμε, το να έχεις μια ιδέα και να ψάχνεις ε, για partners. Με τη Λένα επίσης αναρωτηθήκαμε το ότι λέμε, λέμε, λέμε για πάρτινες πώς κατά τους βρίσκεις αυτούς τους πάρτινες, ας πούμε. Αυτές τις σελίδες μπορείς να... Πώς μπορούμε να τις μοιραστούμε ένα μεταξύ μας, έτσι ώστε... Σε ποιο... Με, σε ποιο με τους partners. Με, με τους partners εννοώ, πώς τα βρίσκεις αυτά. Γιατί δεν έχω ιδέα από ηλεκτρονικά πολύ. Κοίτα, θα το γράψω τώρα αν είναι για να το ρωτήσω στον Μπεντεγκούς. Αλλά νομίζω ότι ο Μπέντεγκους θα μπορέσει να ανεβάσει ε, το τέτοιο, θα ανεβάσει το, αυτό που συμβαίνει τέλο πάντων, το webinar, θα ανεβάσει τις παρουσιάσεις και νομίζω ότι μπορούμε να ανεβάσουμε και ένα αρχείο Excel από τους συμμετέχοντες και τους τρόπους επικοινωνίας τους, τα social media τους. Γιατί όταν συμπληρώσετε τη φόρμα, στην ουσία στη φόρμα μέσα είχε ρε παιδί μου και πες μας κάποια πράγματα για σένα. Οπότε εκεί αυτομάτως, mm-hmm. δηλαδή μόνο, μόνο από αυτό το webinar, Αυτομάτως προκύπτει, ρε παιδί μου, ένα, μια φόρμα με 60 συμμετέχοντες μέσα στους οποίους μπορείς να βρεις πιθανώς πάρτινες. Εγώ είδα και παιδιά από Ισπανία, από το Spider Circ, που τους ξέρω και τους εκτιμώ πολύ, ήμασταν και παλιοί συνεργάτες. Άτομα από Βέλγιο, ο Γιώργος που έχουν κάνει το Circ Λαμπό, έχουν ξεκινήσει από το Circ του Συμπεδέγγιν. Έχουν κάνει τώρα το Circ Λαμπό που είναι τα αμυγός καλλιτεχνικά, το Circ, το circ του Συμπεδέγγιν είναι ε, τα, τα παιδαγωγικά, ας πούμε. Ο παρελθόντος έστειλα μια αίτηση, μου την απορρίψανε. Α, Λέσαι, πάνε τώρα, το... βρες το να. Πάνε τώρα, τώρα βρες το να. Καλά, δεν είναι αυτός έτσι, μπήκε και τώρα. Τώρα. <laughs> δεν, Όχι, δεν εννοώ ότι δεν παρακολουθεί και πολύ. <laughs> δεν έχει έκανα. Τζίνα, και εσύ Θεσσαλονίκη είσαι. Εγώ είμαι Βερολίνο. Ήμουν Άρα. Θεσσαλονίκη όμως. Okay. Ναι, εσύ πού είσαι. Εγώ είμαι Αθήνα. Αθήνα. Εντάξει, δεν σα ξέρω. Πώς σε λένε. Τζίνα. Γεια σου, Τζίνα, είμαι ο Κώστα. Ε, γεια σου, χαρικά. Και ο κύριο Ζογκλέρ. Εγώ είμαι ο Παναγιώτη. Γεια σου, Παναγιώτη. Ο κύριο Ζογκλέρ. Τέλεια. Η Χριστίνα μα είπε ότι δεν μπορεί να έχει <laughs> κάμερα και μικρόφωνο. Οπότε έτσι απλά τη. Γεια σου, Χριστίνα. Είναι, είναι μαζί μα. Απλά είμαστε εκτεθειμένοι. <laughs> <laughs> ναι, κανονικά. Ε, Παναγιώτη, κάπω θα ήθελα να έρθω σε επικοινωνία μαζί σου μετά από αυτό το Zoom ε, webinario που κάνουμε. Ε... Για να σε ρωτήσω μερικά πράγματα με ευκαιρίες περί ζωγκλερικών και τις, ε, το... Με ευχαριστώ. Κάτσε πού να... Σε ποιο chat να Ωραία. σου πω. Στο Messenger, δεν ξέρω. Ε... Ε... Όχι, εδώ που είμαστε. Δεν μπορώ τώρα να Α, σου εδώ πω. υπάρχει. Ξέρω. Εγώ γράφω για να μοιραστούμε Α, σε ναι. ατόμων. Περίμενε. Ε, για τέτοιο, μιλώντας για... Σε βρήκα, ναι. Τώρα, τώρα στα αγγλικά, παιδιά. Τι θες να σου στείλω το τηλέφωνο μου. Α, ναι, αν μπορείς να μου στείλεις το τηλέφωνο σου, θα σε πάρω. Τηλέφωνο να μιλήσουμε. Τέλεια. I'm just checking the rooms that you are doing. Okay, I'm gonna switch back to Greek, because I want to say something to Κωνσταντίνος that I think is like important. Μιλώντας για καλές συμβουλές, αφού αυτό είναι το group, παιδί μου, έτσι όπως σας ξέρω, πιστεύω ότι η Τζίνα και ο Κωνσταντίνος ε, επειδή το έχω συζητήσει και με τον Νίκο το Γαρόζι και μπήκαμε μαζί με τον Νίκο το Γαρόζι και είδα κάποια πράγματα γιατί εγώ δεν είχα ασχοληθεί το Culture Moves Europe 
παίζει να είναι το κόλ που σας ταιριάζει. Είπε διάφορα κόλ ο κύριος Γκάμπο. Είπε για European, mm. Net, για Euro, Euro, European Networks. Σου λέει αυτό, άστο, είναι πολύ μεγάλα, είναι η Συρκοστράτα. Είπε για European Platforms. Σου λέει, εντάξει, και αυτό άστο είναι το Circus Next. Θέλω να πω, είναι mm. πολύ, πολύ μεγάλα, ρε παιδί μου, network. Ναι, ναι, ναι. Είναι European Cooperation Projects που είναι αυτό που κάναμε εμείς με την Βερόνικα, εντάξει, γιατί κάναμε cooperation. Και μετά είναι το Culture Moves Europe και το Perform Europe που είναι πεντακένουργιο γιατί λέει ξεκίνησε 1 Δεκέμβρη, οπότε ούτε εγώ ξέρω να σας πω, αλλά θα το μελετήσω. Το Culture Moves Europe, επειδή είναι για ατομικότητες, δεν χρειάζεται να έχει έναρξη, δεν χρειάζεται να έχει μη κοιό από πίσω, δεν χρειάζεται να έχει τίποτα. Πιστεύω ότι θα σας ταιριάξει. Είστε σίγουροι. Εγώ κατάλαβα ότι όλα αυτά από από αυτόν τον οργανισμό θέλουν να είσαι εστάσεις στο οργανισμό. Επειδή το ψάξαμε με τον Γαρόζη από Πάτρα, το Culture Moves Europe είναι αυτό που μπορείς να είσαι ατομικότητα, ατομικός καλλιτέχνης ή άτυπη ομάδα νέων. Άτυπη ομάδα νέων είναι μέχρι πέντε άτομα που δεν έχετε νομική μορφή και ετήστε είτε για να πάτε κάπου για residency Είτε για να έρθει mm-hmm. κάποιο να κάνει residency σε κάποιο χώρο που δεν είναι απαραίτητο να είναι δικό σα και έχει και αρκετά καλό funding. Ξαναλέω όμω βέβαια και στην ερώτηση που τέθηκε από κάποια άτομα ε, στο chat, αυτά τα προγράμματα δεν είναι για να μα δώσουν τα προ το ζήτη. Δυστυχώ. Mm-hmm. Θα έπρεπε και θα mm-hmm. μπορούσε. Ε, Αρχή δεδομένη ότι ω καλλιτέχνε δεν έχουμε σταθερά εισοδήματα και και και. Η εμπειρία μου λέει ότι δεν ξέρω πόσα προγράμματα ταυτόχρονα πρέπει να τρέχεις για να μπορέσεις να διοπορίζεις από αυτά. Mm. Το να έχεις το συμπλήρωμά σου, ναι, μπορείς. Δηλαδή να τρέξεις ένα project και να πεις, ρε φίλε, δεν κάνω volunteering, θα το πληρωθώ. Αλλά θα είναι αυτό το project. Θα το τρέξεις για ένα χρόνο, θα το κάνεις part-time, γιατί ταυτόχρονα θα κάνεις και τα υπόλοιπά σου. Εντάξει, και θα έχεις, ρε παιδί μου, το, το, το εξτραδάκι, ας πούμε, με αυτήν την εμπειρία. Αλλά για ένα εξάμεινο ή για ό,τι είναι, ρε παιδί μου, έτσι, research project, ειδικά αυτά που κάνεις εσύ, Τζίνα, το Culture Moves Europe, εμένα μου φαίνεται για σένα κουτί. Θα το πω. Αυτό, δηλαδή, από όλα αυτά, εγώ θα κρατούσα mm. το Culture Moves Europe. Και παίζει να το κοιτάξω κι εγώ, γιατί κάπως, ρε παιδί μου, αυτή τη στιγμή μου φαίνεται... Πολύ πιο βατό, δηλαδή, ξέρεις, εγώ εντάξει... Και για μένα το ίδιο προτείνει. Ναι, 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 σίγουρα, Κωνσταντίνε. Σίγουρα, κάτσε να μελετήσεις... Ε, έχασα το σήμα, δεν έχω καλό στο σπίτι. Κάτσε να μελετήσεις το Culture Moves Europe, γιατί πιστεύω, ρε παιδί μου, ότι θα σου δώσει αυτό που ζητάς, το ότι δεν χρειάζεται να έχεις δικιά σου οργάνωση, δεν χρειάζεται να έχεις έναρξη. Ναι, δεν έχω καμία οργάνωση, καμία έναρξη. Αυτό, αυτό. Γενικά θα σας στείλω τώρα έτσι εμείς που μιλάμε τέλο πάντων μπορώ να στείλω και τον οδηγό του Creative Europe στα ελληνικά το μεγάλο του PDF ας πούμε που λέγαμε και φαντάζομαι ότι θα έχει μέσα και το Culture Moves Europe θα έχει όλα τα καλέσματα γιατί είπαμε ότι στα πλαίσια και που κάνει ο, 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 ο Γκάμπορ θα, τη, θα μας τη στείλετε ναι ναι ναι, ναι. είπε ο ε, Μπέντε Μούζο θα στείλει όλα στο, στο email, στα email έρχονται ναι. τέλειο Έρχονται στα email μα. Εντάξει, αυτό είναι πάρα πολύ σημαντικό που ανέφερε μόλι τώρα, γιατί και εμεί έχουμε μια κολεκτίδα, βασικά ανήκω σε μια κολεκτίδα, που έχουμε τρία χρόνια με δράσει, αλλά δεν έχουμε νομική υπόσταση. Mm-hmm. Δεν ήξερα καν ότι υπάρχει δυνατότητα και για ομάδε, άτυπε ομάδε. Άρα ναι, θα το μετά... ψάξω κι εγώ. Ναι, με έβαλε λίγο ο Νίκο Σοβαρόζη να το δούμε. Ε... Και με το που μπήκα και το είδα, εγώ δεν το έψαξα παραπάνω, γιατί εμάς, ρε παιδί μου, η κατεύθυνσή μας είναι περισσότερο για cooperation σε επίπεδο οργανώσεων ε, πλέον. Δηλαδή, εγώ, ας πούμε, ακόμα και η προσωπική μου προτεραιότητα, καλώς ή κακώς δεν είναι να κάνω κάτι προσωπικά καλλιτεχνικό, ρε παιδί μου, αλλά είναι το, το κάτι, τέλος πάντων, έτσι που να αφορά όλη την οργάνωση. Ε, αλλά έτσι όπως μπήκα και το είδα, ε, αυτό είπα και στον ε, Νίκο, ότι είναι πολύ καλή ευκαιρία αν θες να τρέξεις κάτι, ε, όπως είπε και ο Γκάμπορ, έτσι, low level, με την έννοια, ρε παιδί μου, ότι ξέρεις κάτι, ρε παιδί μου, χειροπιαστό, απλό, 
να μην πρέπει να μπλέκει με νομικέ μορφέ, με δεν ξέρω εγώ τι. Έχει μια ιδέα, θε να δει ποια άλλα άτομα στην Ευρώπη ασχολούνται με την ιδέα σου. Ή τέλο πάντων, εγώ α πούμε, αν θα το σκεφτόμουν να το κάλυψε με του γκουρού, θα το σκεφτόμουν σε προσωπικό επίπεδο γιατί έχω ξεκινήσει World Dance. Και γενικά, ρε παιδί μου, το βρίσκω ένα κάλεσμα για να ξαναβγω επί σκηνής, είχα και καιρό να βγω. Οπότε, μέσω του Culture Moves Europe, σκεφτόμουν, ρε παιδί μου, ότι ξέρεις, ένα σαν προσωπικό project, να δουλέψω εγώ με κάποιους καλλιτέχνες, ας πούμε, που θα ήθελα, που ασχολούνται με το World Dance, και να παράξουμε κάτι κατά τη διάρκεια της συνύπαρξής μας. Οπότε, γι' αυτό έλεγα και για την Τζίνα, ρε παιδί μου, γιατί ξέρω ότι πειραματίζεται με πράγματα. Οπότε, αν ξέρει άτομα που υπάρχουν ε, στην Ευρώπη, μπορεί να, να κινήσει μια τέτοια διαδικασία. Ή και μόνο. Εμείς, προς, εμείς το, στις δύο βασικά κολλεκτίδες που ανήκω, τη μία ανήκει και ο Στέλιος βασικά, παίζει να σου έχει μιλήσει για την Artnet. Α, βέβαια. Ε, ε, ναι, 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 ναι. Είμαστε μαζί, το ξεκινήσαμε έξι μέλη και τώρα έχει μεγαλώσει. Ε, απλά στην άλλη, με το χώρο που έχουμε, ε, έχουμε ένα δίκτυο συνεργατών. Δηλαδή, έχουμε συμμετάσχει σε collaborations, άρα, αλλά άτυπα πίσω από άλλε νομικέ υποστάσει που συνεργαζόμαστε, δηλαδή με το Χουάντο Κοράλε, με στην Ισπανία, με οργανισμού. Απλά, δηλαδή, στα, στα δύο χρόνια βασικά δραστηριοποίηση, τρία χρόνια το έχουμε ξεκινήσει, ε, δεν, δεν έχουμε κάνει ακόμα νομική υπόσταση. Είμαστε να, να προχωρήσουμε σε μια μη κερδοσκοπική, γιατί είναι μη κερδοσκοπικό το εγχείρημα. Απλά μας σταμάτησαν κάποιες προσωπικές δυσκολίες που λέγαμε με το, το να βρεις τρόπο να το κάνεις βιώσιμο όλο αυτό τέλο πάντων. Ε, άρα δηλαδή έχουμε ένα networking, απλά δεν έχουμε... Δηλαδή θα μας στέριαζε και το, πώς θα το άλλο πρόγραμμα, το Cooperate... Co ε, European Cooperation Project. Ναι, αλλά εκεί χρειάζεται από ό,τι κατάλαβα να έχεις... Την νομική Εκεί υπόσταση... χρειάζεται legal entity. Ναι. Απλά να ρωτήσω λίγο κάτι για διευκρίνηση. Εκεί μόνο ο... η χώρα που είναι coordinator, ο οργανισμός που είναι coordinator χρειάζεται να έχει δύο χρόνια που έχει την νομική υπόσταση με δράσεις. Ε, δηλαδή, εγώ άμα... Ε, ε. Συγγνώμη, τι είπες, Μαρία. Δεν το ξέρω. Δεν, δεν, δεν το γνωρίζω. Νομίζω αυτό έγραφε, θα το διευκρινήσω ναι, το... σε ένα... Μπράβο. Γιατί το είπε... είπε και πριν σε ένα τε... Γιατί αν, σκέφτη... sorry, αν είσαι coordinator, αυτό, αυτό πρέπει λέω. να έχεις δύο χρόνια τέτοιο. Αν είσαι απλώς παρτίσιμα, ναι, δεν μας Α. ενδιαφέρει. Ε, ναι, ναι, και επίση δεν... μπορείς να μην Α. έχεις εσύ... Ε, sorry, καζε να σου πω, επειδή ήμουν στο άλλο chat πριν. Ε, ναι. Μπορείς να μην είσαι εσύ ε, established organization, αλλά να συνεργαστείς με κάποιον και να πει θέλω να κάνω αυτό και να κάνω αυτήν την αίτηση και χρειάζομαι κάποιον οργανισμό ε, για να κάνω apply from this και πρέπει απλά να σε προσλάβουν για εκείνη την περίοδο ο οργανισμός αυτός. Mm. Δηλαδή δεν αρκεί απλά να βρεις κάποιον, πρέπει, mm. πρέπει να είσαι. Εσύ πέρα. Σοφία, πού βρίσκεσαι, ε? ε Θεσσαλονίκη. Θεσσαλονίκη. Κάνεις δεν στην Αθήνα. <laughs> Αθήνα, μάλιστα. Δεν υπάρχει τίποτα εδώ πέρα. Την, αγα... <laughs> την αγαπάω για λίγο την Αθήνα. Μετά από πολύ... μεγάλο χρονικό διάστημα δεν μπορώ από την υπερπληροφορία. <laughs> δεν μπορώ να σας πω. Μόνιμο θύμα τη. <laughs> Θα πάω λίγο στον Κάμπορ και ελπίζω να σας προλάβω πριν το διαλύσετε εδώ πέρα. Το παρεάκι. Ναι, ε, ναι. Λένα, έρχεσαι από κάπου αλλού, από κάποιο άλλο breakout room, να μας πεις τα νέα. Ναι, πήγα λίγο στη ε, Βερόνικα. Για πες. Ε, και νομίζω ότι ήταν εκεί αυτά τα δύο παιδιά που έψαχνες. Α, μπράβο. Σε ερωτήσεις, μπράβο. Και ρωτούσαν και αυτοί πιο πολύ για το οικονομικό, ότι δεν είναι λίγο, πώς το λένε, αμφίβολο το αν τελικά θα το λάβεις και τι γίνεται με τη δουλειά που έχεις καταλάβει, έτσι, να τα έτσι. πάρει ήδη και τα λοιπά. Αλλά εντάξει, η αλήθεια είναι ότι... Πού είναι. Τι να του πούνε, θέλω να πω ότι έτσι, έτσι είναι τα πράγματα. Ναι, μπορεί να απορριφθεί, μπορεί να σου φύγουν οι partners, μπορεί να γίνουν πολλά σε διάμεσο. Ναι, είναι αυτό που, είναι αυτό που σας είπα και εγώ για τα downsides. Δεν, δεν, μπορεί να σου προσφέρει, δεν μπορεί να σου προσφέρει η Ευρωπαϊκή Επιτροπή κάποιο είδου εξασφάλισης σε αυτό. Αν αφιερώσει το χρόνο που είναι να αφιερώσει και τελικά η πρότασή σου δεν εγκριθεί. Ναι. Δεν γίνεται. Αυτομένως. Επίσης, το αν, το αν εν τέλει προκύψει περισσότερη δουλειά από αυτή που περίμενες, είναι εμπειρία για την Ακριβώς. επόμενη πρόταση. Θέλω να πω... Έχει να κάνει μάλλον με τη δική σου οργάνωση. Ναι. Α, φεύγουμε. So we are all back. 
And I would like to give a couple of uh, minutes or a chance for that if any of you has something to share in this uh, plenary format, like what you could learn or you have um, mm, as a feeling about or just like a aha uh, effect, please share it with us before the film. Yes, I was talking to Marianne earlier. And uh, hello, I'm Panagiotis. I'm from Athens, Greece. I am a juggler. I have a business here since 20 years now. And uh, after all the, you know, experience with the shows and events, etc., I would really like to move towards teaching and training, juggling, mostly and uh, i was um, what i'm thinking of doing and i've i've got the equipment got, went to the functional juggling seminar anyway and um i have two things in my mind first uh address institutions uh like you can fund uh, educational programs concerning juggling in other institutions for people do, that have, you know, like uh, blind people or refugees or, you know, people with difficulties anyway. And um, that's one part, find funding for that. And the other part is uh, do juggling training, like a team building activity in corporate uh, environment like in companies that want to do it for their employees etc so i was wondering if we could um, if there's anybody interested in uh, doing that in a european level not just you know in a country level so that's my idea We are always happy to enter collaborations. You can you can count on the Hungarian Juggling Association and Inspira definitely. And the good news for you that we are actually about functional juggling. We are creating now network, so you can enter that as well. And uh, probably we're gonna also present some project how we uh, in March how we can also support um, in each country the growth of uh, functional juggling. So mm -hmm. we will think about you for sure. Great. Uh, how can we get in touch for that? The network I here. think as soon as there will be the project idea, uh, we usually just send it out and then we're going to send it to you as well. I, I will remember and also is getting now set up a networking platform in many languages because Mark Bildert from Germany is very good in all the iTech things. So he's created already a platform about functional juggling, which is going to be uh, ready or maybe is already online. I think uh, when, when it's ready or I know about it, I can also inform you. And um, then on the platform, it's exactly for people to meet about different topics and create networking on uh, about the topic of functional juggling. Great, thanks. Welcome. So I would like to share something. A week after we came back from a Vesprem, we have a conversation with Marianthi and I said, okay, Marianthi, withdrawal symptoms are trying, are uh, starting to appear. So come on, what's next? What's next? What's, what can, will come next? So we'll have to, to find the, the next uh, step. Hmm? And I'm looking at you, Veronica, because you are the master, the guru. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, actually, this project we have to finish first. <laughs> uh, 
I mean, for you guys as an artist, you you went home still. We continue on like reporting and closing the project, which is an essential part. And this moment, what we are doing now about like dissemination, which is a key word in European projects. So we try to give on all the results. And there is going to be very important information in January. You will be all informed and invited. We're going to have a second webinar, which is more about the artistic uh, results of Together Project. So we're going to talk more about uh, inspirational artistical things. And um, so we first uh, want to uh, conclude this. And also we have to remember that 23 of January is the deadline for uh, Creative Europe for the next one. Whoever feels like being prepared with a project idea, I think for sure um, it's possible to work on it. And also there is another Creative Europe finally next year, which is not commonly happens, but I think in October or November, there is a second deadline. And there is always the small scale partnerships. Maybe you can be coordinate, Nicholas, and I can be the partner. <laughs> yes, uh, that uh, I'm not uh, speaking as an artist uh, only. I would like to participate as a partner also. I don't know if I have the, the guts and the know how to lead in the project. Yeah. <laughs> I would like to to be a part of this. Yes, and we love you, so you're gonna be. <laughs> Just to add something what uh, Veronica said that uh, the deadline, yes, next year and every year there will be a cooperation project deadline. Every year during the seven years there is a cooperation project deadline, and this year, as I mentioned, we have only small and medium scale. But next year, we have small, medium, and also larger scale cooperation projects as well. But it's a, it's, it's, it's a different deadline. So it's a next year's deadline. So every year, every year we have just one deadline for, for cooperation projects. Okay, you know, it's, it's, it, it, it depends on usually uh, between the publication and the deadline of the call is usually three months maximum. But of course, uh, if you only want to use these three months for preparing your application and your project and the consortia and everything, it's not enough. So please prepare. And, uh, and as was already mentioned, have enough time to prepare everything. So basically, if you now you feel that you will miss the January deadline, please prepare for the next one. Okay. Thank you. And one more thing that I think I, I didn't mention this, but with Perform Europe, um, uh, the consortia that, that now implements Perform Europe uh, made also uh, a very good tool for partner search and matchmaking tool. So please also check that out if you if you would like to uh, be in international cooperations. Um, because I, I think it uh, when when uh, when it was showed to us, it's it's like wow, it's a very useful tool, a very good IT tool to to uh, basically to be able to uh, design your whole project, like uh, like from very broad designing to very detailed designing of your project as well. So have a look at that as well. And uh, thank you very much. And, and Gabor, can you say again the name of uh, that uh, program, which is financing also the individual uh, residency and mobility of the artist, because Sean was asking for it. Yes, it's Culture Moves Europe. Uh, and if you have my presentation, I think you, you will have the, the direct link to to the to the culture moves europe the european commission's website and from the european commission's website you can easily reach uh the calls uh i mean the individual individual mobility call and the residency call as well excellent thanks a lot um maybe one small comment before uh, we start the movie Anybody feels like sharing, proposing?
it looks like everybody wants to see the film we have. <laughs> so I think um, this is the moment uh, to uh, say goodbye also because maybe after the movie we just uh, not gonna be back together. So thank you for being with us. Thank you for our presenters, uh, Gabor, Marianne, Nina. Thank you for your uh, partnership, for your love, for your contribution, uh, or for your active participation, all of you. And please remember in January, we are going to be back with the Together webinar also to talk about the artistic results of the Together project. So that's going to be more uh, artistical, inspirational on that way. So Mariansi, maybe you have something for saying goodbye, Nina or uh, any of the presenters before we start the film? Um, thank you all for being here and see you around. Yes, and also from my side, thank you for being so enthusiastic. And please uh, keep that that enthusiasm because uh, uh, it, there were a lot of really important things that that you mentioned in in your presentations, and uh, and. The main the main message I would like to give is to emphasize that really if you you have to love your project you have to you have to be very uh, connected to your project or else you know it it, it won't be you know of course uh, you could you could lose yourself in the words in the wordings in the jargon of the call but the main thing is that you are able to very concretely define what you would like to do and and be enthusiastic about it. And then hopefully you will succeed. Thank you. A technical question to Ben de Goose. Uh, people from my breakout room asked where and how could we have the contacts of all the people of this webinar and how can we share it with them? Because they thought it's a really good start for networking. I yeah, think we can create an email. Sorry, Bandagu is to answer your name. I think we just create an email with the links and presentations and send it to all of you guys, and then you can continue. Yeah, because we have the registration form, and if I um, so, it everybody has its email, so we can send to everybody. And but, the... but how will they know who is who? I thought maybe we could share the question from the application form, um, share something about yourselves, because there we have websites, we have social media. How, how think, could we uh, share we that? Can, we can have a short discussion on this after the yeah, meeting perfect. and find out how to perfect. serve the best perfect. everybody to perfect. find each other. It's going to be also on our websites, maybe the photos, and we made the beautiful group picture, and many people has their name on it. Perfect. So it's already kind of a Facebook. <laughs> and yeah, so this is the big moment, the premiere of the first version of the last version of the movie of Together film. Um, I hope you're gonna enjoy it. I literally was crying when I saw it the first time, being so emotional. And after all, what we live together and see it again, I hope it will be visible how much we loved it, how much it was great to be together. So please enjoy it. Thanks for being with us. Thanks for the support of European uh, Union program of Creative Europe and thanks for you guys to be with us. Let's be together. <laughs>